come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello and thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast and welcome to this, the epic this annual it. best and worst of 2018 That's right. wrap up episode because we do, contrary to popular opinion, watch current movies during the year. We is do? it the popular opinion that we only watch <laughs> shit? <laughs> that- well, old shit, Sean. Old shit. Old shit. Older shit. We watch new shit, too. <laughs> we do. It's true. really shit. It's true. <laughs> so we're going to tell you uh, what we think personally are the best and one worst, the five best each and one worst movie of the year 2018. Mm-hmm. So who are the internet radio superstars? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin, and we want to let you know that you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We're also, uh, right now, we're past the uh, voting for what movies we're going to be watching in January. January is going to be a uh, listener choice where you guys picked the movie and voted for it. We don't know what it is at the time we're recording this, but uh, right. it's coming up next episode mm-hmm. colin's getting nervous <laughs> we're all a little bit we're nervous. sweating a little bit right now yeah hopefully i'm just i'm yeah. hoping that the voting platform holds out we're still having <laughs> we're, we're, i have not we been still have attention. A, we still have a touch of uh, ptsd from rawhead rex until something replaces it it'll always be rawhead rex I, i'm thinking back to all the picks i had this year that didn't land and i'm like oh who's gonna get me back for those like, <laughs> like it's true. i have it coming yep. so by the time you're listening to this we've already posted Posted probably on social media what the first one's going to be, but uh, uh, we don't know right now. And uh, we also ask you, just as a little bit of housekeeping, if you can go and give us a like or a star rating or a review wherever you found us on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, wherever, uh, all of those votes for us help us get found by other people like yourself who like this kind of uh, movie talk and uh, we're going to spread the word of the Saturday night freak show. And pretty soon we'll take over the world. Spread the freak show like a virus. That's right. <laughs> like a cult. All right. So uh, a cult, like a cult. I like, yeah, yeah, that's I like better. Better. I'd rather it's us better. be a cult. Yeah. yeah I like, Do we get like a secret cults. handshake or something well, to be admitted into that. the cult? I think I Igor's working on one. Okay. Yeah. Can we get a secret look or like, yeah, like right. Branding. Wait, or didn't sort? someone say like a week or two ago, something should be the pa- secret password to get in the basement. Was it Dom who said that? Someone's. Oh, it was something stupid we said, and they were mm. like, yeah, "That should be the secret password to get in the basement." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something stupid we back. said. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that'll be the that quote book we release. Yeah, our like, best like, a, quotes from just the out show. of context quote. Yeah. Something yeah. stupid we said does not narrow it down in any way. No, not at all. <laughs> that could be a Sometimes multitude we are of things. Very stupid. Well, let me ask <laughs> it you. Could this. be argued as the whole t- running time. time. Yeah. Just to get us kicked off on this, what was your metrics for? Like, so are you going with your favorite movies or the best? Best yeah, objective that's best film favorite. Of a little bit of both. A little, yeah, a little bit of both. Mine's I, straight favorite. Straight favorite. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably more favorite because there's some on my list that I'm like, you know what? I don't even know if I would tell a lot of people like, run out and see this movie. Mm-hmm. It's just how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think that's what I'm going for. Yeah. I'm going for the movies that I enjoyed the experience. Yep. I know there's a the couple on my list that I'm like, I would not recommend this movie to everybody. Like, I wouldn't tell my family, go out and watch this. I'd hate it. Mm-hmm. But to me, I, I had so much fun with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Mm-hmm. I guess it's going to land on me this year. I, so, yeah. I like the fact that I'm not in where Michaela's sitting, because usually we. I we, wanted right, this seat. Yeah. I, I was like, I was there. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. this is, a th- I expected Colin to be yep. there. All right. Well, I'm going to be there. Well, I was there last week, so, you know. I don't yeah, do it yeah. Too it's true. Right, right. It's true. Can't don't do hog general. it, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so number five of the movies that you should see that came out in 2018. All right, so I am going to go with um, Alex Garland's Annihilation. Oh. You guys seen this movie? Yeah, I did. Sean, you're the only person I know who did not like this movie. I know. It is like (laughs) universally loved around. It's on everyone's top list. Everyone's top list. I don't. I don't. Uh, well, let's see why Colin mm. likes the movie, and then we can well, come I, to I, me. I guess. I think um, 
I mean, I've been interested in this guy's career. This is like what I do, right? I find a, a, a find a dude. I find a like, horse yeah, in the you're race. My dude, right? Yeah, now. I, I pick him and I'm like, like watch Jeremy Sonier. Yeah, he's fucking himself up. Himself up. <laughs> yeah, right. you fuck it up. This this <laughs> was no longer in your corner. <laughs> Jeremy Sonier, for those of you who don't know, came on the scene with a movie called Blue Ruin, which mm-hmm. was fantastic. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Good movie. Uh, then sorry, what was the one? Followed right up there? with a better room. The, the, the green room. room. Green room, room. yeah. One. Green room and was so awesome. Which is yeah. And then we're like, what's his third movie? And it went direct to Netflix. It was called Red um, Bullshit. What is <laughs> yeah, it? like before, not before. Hold the dark. Hold the dark. Thank you very much. And it was like atrocious. And that was yeah. one of the movies. That's not my worst. Yeah. No. But, no. Yeah. Um. But Alex Garland was a writer who did, worked on movies like 28 Days. Well, he wrote the novel The Beach. And I think that's how he got associated with Danny Boyle and uh, did uh, 28 Days Later and um, Sunshine for Danny Boyle. Right. And maybe another one. But since then, he wrote Sunshine. Dread, which was one of did my favorite movies of uh, which one? Godzilla. Is that somebody else? Nope. That's, uh, yeah, that's Gareth Edwards. Dread, yeah. maybe. Dread, maybe. Dread, was Dread really good. and then, but then he started directing with Ex Machina. And Ex Machina was the one where I'm like, this guy is a voice in yes. science mm-hmm. fiction. Like, it's thinky sci fi, and that's what Annihilation mm-hmm. is. Thinky sci fi. Um, it's I, a movie Ex about. Ex Machina is great, by the way. That's why, you, oh, you did see it, Annihilation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it kind of carries on those same themes. It's like, what is the self and like, where does the person, you know, what actually makes you you? Mm-hmm. Because this thing takes place in a, there's like been this catastrophic event, an alien uh, meteor crashes that has some kind of life form on it that causes a thing called the shimmer, which refracts, like it actually breaks up. Uh, DNA, yeah, like of everything that goes into it. So, like, level. you know, it's like, where, yeah. So, like, parts of you become part of the uh, surrounding around it. It was just like this really cool, um, uh, like you know, intelligent sci-fi movie. I thought Natalie Portman's in it and Jennifer Jason Leigh. I think it was uh, one of the things that she did after the Hateful Eight. Didn't she get an Oscar for Hateful Eight? Yeah, she did. She, she got a nomination for it. Yes, mm-hmm. Genesis Rodriguez is in it as well. Yeah, yeah. It's because, uh, yeah, they have, it's like a team of women who go into mm-hmm. this thing because the guys who have gone in, Oscar Isaac was one of them, all the teams end up killing themselves. Or, you know, something always happens right, to or them. each other. Yeah. Nobody knows what happens once they go through this, the shimmer. Uh, the design of this movie to experience it and just watch it is like one of the most beautiful things I think that I've seen. I mean, just like unique. You're just sitting there going like, "This is I've never seen anything like this before." Now like, I agree, it is. It's a beautiful movie, and I have not seen anything like that. And it's uh, yeah, because it's like he did elf fantastic. with uh, yeah. you know that are that have uh, they're, they're leaves kind of, on their right. horns. They're and, turning into the like the foliage. Yeah, everything's combining. There's nothing in a there's beautiful like, way. Yeah, there's no difference between the flora and the fauna. Kind right. of in this uh, environment, cool. it was just toward the end where. Um, where the movie wraps up, where it starts to get a little, uh, maybe too heady for its own good. And this is ends where with, I fell out of it. Because everything up to that point, I'm like, awesome, cool. Yeah, and we'll try to be spoiler-free because these sure. are new movies. But uh, I think the very end of it, um, that was, I, I guess, why it didn't rank higher on my list was because the very end of it, I think, is a cheat. Where it's one of those things where I think the filmmakers know what they want to get out of it. But they're leaving it up to your interpretation. But they don't give you enough, I don't think, enough clues to actually come down on it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I know that's making me sound like I'm dogging on the movie. But up until that very last moment. No, I'll dog on the movie. um, I thought that it was a fantastic, uh, you know, science fiction experience. I mean, like a real science fiction movie, which I don't think that we get enough of anymore. Now, science fiction means yeah, they're robots that turn into cars. Right. (laughs) This is like, you know, you're thinking about the concepts of science. And fictionalizing and extrapolating, you know, what would happen. I mean, molecular biology and, you know, a cancer that uh, grows on the earth. (laughs) So, I mean, it's really cool. Music's Uh, good, too. Score score for the movie is really good. Yeah, there's actually one part toward the end. I'm not sure if it was breaking my speakers. I have to, like, hear this on something else. But there's, like, no, there was, like, crackling happening. And I'm like, is this hitting, like, the brown note or something? You know, (laughs) Whatever it is you call it, the brown note. (laughs) Yeah, the sub. uh, (laughs) I was like, I was just shitting myself all night. (laughs) The subtonal. Oh, you feel it. Yeah, with the subwoofer. Oh, Oh, yeah. Um, God damn it. All right, Colin, you made me want to watch this movie again. Yeah, you're going to see an No, because I, I agree with everything you say. Like the, I think the ending is what really put me off of it, because I'm like, I I understand what you want to do, but I think you got to go a little bit farther for your audience 
for this movie and I didn't quite agree yeah. with how they ended it. Everything yeah. up to that is like, again, it's beautiful. I love the arcs of like Tessa Thompson's in this movie as well. Mm -hmm. Like her whole thing where she ends up and everything is great. It's beautiful. But just that ending is just something else that kind yeah, of it's the inception me. ending. Well, even with the inception ending, I'm good with though. But like, mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. It's yeah. just like wh wh the characters are like going, "Where does this leave us?" And it leaves us going, "Well, where does this leave us?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When you when your characters are saying, "Oh, I even don't the characters know. are never resolved." The no, the characters are they're it's, they're not resolved. I mean, I think I get where what's going on. Yes. So maybe that's maybe I should say that I you know if I'm just going with my gut instinct yeah. and I do know what's going on, I'm just not entirely satisfied mm -hmm. right with the implications of that. But mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I would agree. I don't want to say mm -hmm. any more. I guess, no. but, but other than that, would be I think, uh, and and I guess uh, part of my methodology here because I was like struggling today trying to figure out what was coming in at number five, and there are several Netflix movies that I'm like I think that they, they may rank higher, but I was just like you know like how do I separate you know mm -hmm. I had like what was it like three or four movies i was like what goes on number five yeah and i basically said if it's a movie that i've watched multiple times then i'm putting it on the list i've seen annihilation more than once so i'm gonna go with annihilation number five sean what's your number five my number five is a movie that came out earlier this year called love simon oh yeah yeah um, it's, uh, I thought it was a, a very good movie. It's a movie about, uh, a high school, a young man in high school. He knows that he's gay, but he hasn't come out to like his family or his friends. And it's, it's a coming of age tale. Um, and I know that might like turn some people off to coming of age tales. Cause you know, you're tired of them at this Wait, point. What was the coming of age tale you had last year in your number five? Uh, was it I a Greta like Gerwig movie? Oh, Lady, Lady Bird. Bird. Okay. Was that my number five? I think, yeah. Uh, it was on your list somewhere. It was on your list. I think was that's it? where you started with. Maybe. Yeah. I think I do like the coming of age tale. <laughs> they, they may be, um, I mean, you may have seen this shit before, but I mean, it gets to me for some reason. I like, um, I like those relationships. I like people like working through that period in their life and figuring shit out and seeing all that stuff. So um, I thought this movie was very well done. It's got great performances by um, uh, Josh Duhamel. Um, what's her name? What's the mom? Um, Jennifer. Is Josh Duhamel the Garner? dad? Jennifer. Josh Duhamel's the dad. Okay. Jennifer Garner is her uh, his wife. Um, mm -hmm. she's I don't like her in a lot, mm -hmm. but she's very good in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, even the supporting characters. Um, one of them, the main lead from Thirteen Reasons Why. Mm -hmm. I forgot her name. Catherine something or other. Something. She's in it. All the friends are pretty fleshed out. Like it's a good story. It's emotional. Um, and, uh, I, I, I like the whole thing. So, uh, that's my number five. I, I thought it was a decent story, but I don't know. I kind of got a vibe from it. Like there are certain coming of age stories that I think anyone can watch it and enjoy it. And then there's some that I'm like, okay, this is just kind of for people that are coming of age currently. <laughs> that's kind of how I felt about that movie. Like it only, only for the people like, right. Like teenagers. Then, like yeah. teenagers. Yeah. I feel like. Sure. It's like a self-help thing. you're getting old. To, to the to help you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, no, cause there are some coming of age stories that I like. <laughs> right. Know? No. But I, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like, yeah, and that's this quite is the, for it, a younger audience. Yes. And well, it definitely is. It does feel like it, it feels yeah. like right now. Yeah. Like, who knows how this will age or I mean, yeah. it may people may look back on it years from now and be like, because yeah. eh. I mean, it's, it's a good movie. It I liked is, it. I will agree. It is an of the moment movie. It is. That's exactly it. Yeah. But it, it got me right in that moment. Who made it? Um. Oh, what's his name? Hold on. I pulled it up. Yeah, the, yeah uh, it might not be a timeless. Coming Greg Berlin. Right, exactly, exactly. I don't exactly. think it will be. Yeah. No. no, but for this exactly. year, I, I like it hit at the right time. Right. Yeah. Uh, Greg Berlanti. Um, he was he's been producer on a bunch of superhero movies and TV shows. Riverdale. Um, he's directed. Oh, geez. A couple other movies, and that's it. Like mm. Political Animals, Life as We Know It in 2010. So not Ooh. much. I think it's more like a writer producer movie. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's produced like Batgirl and Arrow and stuff like that. So he likes working with Josh Dumel, huh? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> he does indeed. So he hasn't done a lot, but there's that one. Well, Number before five. before we get to Holly, mm -hmm. I do want to just say for everybody listening out there, we haven't seen everything. And obviously no, we're, we're no. we are recording this uh, before the end of the year, so yeah. even there's a couple films at the end. We're of the missing year, right? a lot, actually. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're shoving it into the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. it's like. Uh. And if you ask us in three weeks, we might have different answers. So yeah. Yeah. in three yeah. weeks, that, this is all definitely going to change. And yeah. you know that has happened to us before. I mean, had 
had Colin and I watched Hell or High Water before our episode right. Two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. two years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, on the list. Once I saw that movie, I was like, fuck, <laughs> this would have been my number one. That was really high on mine. Yeah, yeah I really loved high. that movie, mm-hmm. but I hadn't gotten to it yet. Mm-hmm. Sean was the only one that had watched yeah. it. Yeah. And he's like, you guys, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there are movies that could. This is when we were discovering yeah. Taylor Sheridan. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so, so check in on blew it all with Yellowstone. Yeah. You see that TV show this year? Is it bad? No. It just was not interesting. It, I mean, yeah, I didn't he- feel the vo- the, hear the voice, and I saw Sicario too, yeah. which does have its moments. Sure, but I don't. They're trying to make like a series out of it or right. something. I'm like, yeah, there's not a series there, guys. No. That was no. a story. But yeah, right. no, yeah, you yeah. got the story. Let's not let's not do that yeah. anymore. Let's yeah. skip this third one that you want to make. Yeah, because <laughs> I think he wrote the second one. Also, mm-hmm. Taylor Sheridan. Yeah, yeah, he wrote the second one. Yeah, and he's, he's just like, we got one more in us. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. You didn't have the second one. I might have to wait for a review on the next Taylor Sheridan movie to go. Wow, so wow, this wow. is the year our filmmakers let us yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. this year, yeah. I'm we kind built them of up salty about like... a lot of things this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a hard year for movies. Yeah, it was. It last it was. year I struggled yeah. like to narrow well, down movies. Yeah, last year I year. was last year I was so in love with movies. I was mm-hmm. so excited about almost everything I saw this mm-hmm. year. I didn't love like anything. I was very was optimistic really... about movies last Wait, year. Yeah. You loved yeah. five movies, Holly. What's your fifth I movie? <laughs> <laughs> My number five uh, goes along with the whole, it's not necessarily the best movies of the year, but it's ones I enjoyed. My number five is A Simple Favor. Uh, see, this is another one I want to see. <laughs> Wait, is this, you gotta watch uh, with Blake Lively Blake and Lively. Anna Kendrick, oh, okay. uh, Paul yeah. Fing. Yeah, it's... Um, well, maybe I don't want to see it. Paul Fing. No, this no, is his best movie, man. Is, I know that's what I hear. It's a low, I mean, it's a low bar. It is a low yeah. bar, yeah, no, but it is his best movie. This is not. This is not what you would normally get from it. It's a thriller, mm-hmm. right? It is a thriller. Okay. And a comedy. Black comedy. And it 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 changes its themes throughout the movie. And normally, I hate that, but in this, it's. <laughs> It's so bizarre. The reason I picked this movie is because Michaela and I saw it together, and I think she's going to piggyback off a lot of what I say. I have a feeling it's on her top five, but we'll see. Really? Um, you got to tell me what this movie's about. I like, well, well, we can we, we can, can only say a little. Can bit. only okay. say so much yeah. because um, it's there are there are twists in this movie, and some you'll see coming, and some come out of the middle of fuck nowhere. It's just crazy. It's it's got a, it's got that. That in that intensity of like of like a really dramatic lifetime movie where it's just like so it's in, right up Michaela's. No, it's, it's crazy high it's budget so, though. <laughs> Insanely yeah. high no, budget. No, it's it's like someone who has watched lifetime movies all their life, got big stars, got some decent writing, and a huge budget. And they're like, we're just and, gonna go for and it. And they're like, you know what? We're gonna make this rated R and we're gonna go for but it. But it's like four lifetime movies worth it of content. Is. Like it's it is. There's so oh there's so, I'll get into so it. So we can no, expect a murder. <laughs> most foul. You can ex you can expect um let's see, weird shit. Um your your main character is uh, Anna Kendrick is mm-hmm. the main character. Um and her best friend who she hasn't known very long goes missing. And you kind of go with Anna Kendrick as she's figuring out more about her new friend while she's, I mean, she, I guess she's kind of looking for, her, um, but you're getting backstory about both of them at the same time. It's, I'm, I don't, I don't want to give anything so away. Twisty. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's twisty. It's twisty. very twisty. Okay. Was it written by Paul Feig? No, it's a novel. Oh, yeah, it's a novel. Okay. That's okay. probably why it works. Yeah. <laughs> right, Cause yeah. he didn't write it. <laughs> it definitely has like, it, and Melissa McCarthy's not in it. She's yeah. not in it. Yeah. Um, it's Shocker. definitely got, um, the comedic, uh, like Anna Kendrick comedy. If you know, sometimes it goes too long. I was, sometimes say. it goes a little too long. It's a little like pitch perfecty, mm-hmm. but it's still, it's still pretty funny. Um, Blake Lively is my favorite part of this movie. Mm-hmm. She's fucking fantastic. Her character is just, she's very, um, She's like the New York woman. She's very fashionable. She's very, you know, highbrow. Direct. Very direct. You know, she's always drinking a martini and saying fuck. And Mm -hmm. she's just fantastic. And the soundtrack of this movie is wonderful. I've been... It has like 60s French music. Mm. And I've been listening to it nonstop since I saw this movie. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Um, There's just something about this movie that was just really exciting. It was... I mean, it... I think probably in maybe the second act towards the end, it slowed down a little bit, but the story is so gripping because it's so fucking bizarre. 
It's just, it's something to watch. It ex- it's an experience. It's absolutely an experience. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of it. And that's why I picked it. It's not necessarily the best movie of the year at all. Um, but it's fun. Mm. It's weird and fun. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I had a good time with it. And I know, and I know there were several times, because we saw it together, there were several times that we would look at each other and like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? It was great. And, or we'd be like, oh, no, don't, don't. Yeah, don't, don't do don't, that. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that. It was, like, a, lot it was of a lot of cringing. There was a lot of cringing. Yeah, lots of cringing, but in the best way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that one just came out on video recently mm-hmm. too. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. it's it's a fun everyone one to can check, check out. it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fun one to check mm-hmm. out. Michaela, number five. My number five is also a simple favorite. <laughs> I, <knew it! laughs> uh, I think Paul Feig is a bad director. I think he got yeah. lucky, and this is a fluke, and he'll never do it again. I think that I I don't and any of his previous movies before this I do not care for. Stick to um, TV, Paul. Yeah, he yeah yeah he real. he's a competent TV director. That's what he should stick to. This movie he he uh, I mean it's an airport novel. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Th- this is the best case scenario you can hope for with an airport <laughs> novel being made into a movie. Like it's and like you, when you see it, you'll get what I mean by like airport novel. It's just it's not ne- like like we've been back yeah. and forth on this. I don't know if it's good or not. Exactly. Like, it's kind of yeah. trashy, but it's executed so well. Yes. That it doesn't matter how trashy it is. Yes. Um, but it's yeah, Anna Kendrick's like a mommy blogger and like so she's like like works on YouTube full time mm-hmm. and like is like the perfect like stay at home mom and then like Blake Lively is like her foil because she's just like she wears suits and she works in a like she's a high powered executive in New York and she like really doesn't care what people think about her mm-hmm. and like and then Blake Lively goes missing and the whole thing unravels and Anna Kendrick gets really 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 involved um, and mm-hmm. it's like you get everything you are promised in the trailer time and then then some and like then because some. there are so many subplots happening there are so many twists that like there was a couple times I texted you after we watched this and I was like okay did they explain why this <laughs> led to this because like it happened so fast because yeah. like the first act is very slow because like they really want you to live in with these characters and get mm-hmm. a sense of their dynamic together and how opposite they are of mm-hmm. each other um, but then once like the drama ramps up it goes almost too fast I think it's it's very fast yeah I don't want to say fast paced, but they're throwing a lot of information yeah. at you. Yeah. And it's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a lot to like remember and keep track of. It is. But it um I mean, like, I don't want to compare it to Gone Girl because that like is a like an artfully crafted movie. But but it's, it's like in only... its tone, it is yeah. similar, at least in the first act. I, yeah. I mean it takes some weird shifts later on, like some <laughs> really weird shifts. But I think if you like if you like those big budget lifetime movies, like this is the best version you're ever gonna get of that. Yeah, for so this sure. is better because than Girl on a Train, is what you're saying. Yes. Oh, fuck I that. Assume yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that movie. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it's, that movie. Well, I, I mean, saw that because but, I wanted more Gone Girl. Yeah. For some, sure, I think that's it just, not. Yeah. It's a similar yeah. title. Sure. Yeah. And I like those kind of you know. Well, no, that, and, and, yeah. and you're and you're right and you're right on the theme there because I, I read Gone Girl. I read Girl on a Train, and mm. they're both like they're gripping reads. Um, Gone Girl. Did is, you read Simple Favor before? I did not read that. I gotta read it now. But I have to. Who's the novelist? Uh, I have no idea. One of those okay. people. Yeah, yeah. Is, but know. it's not a Jillian Flynn. No, 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 no it's not Jillian Flynn. But this one of those people uh, got lucky. I, I, I'm starting to remember things that happened in the movie as we're talking about that, and there's some real gross stuff. There there's are some real gross yes. moments where I was like, I can't believe a mainstream movie is like going here. Hmm. Yeah, know? shit. Now I want to see. Like, this. I know. Yeah. I want to. There's some like. This. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have time after this. Is yeah. 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 yeah, and I know. You're, I remember what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about, and that's when we were both like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, it's. It's beautifully shot. It looks great. It's it an amazing looking yeah. house. It's like it's some yeah. good like home house porn too. Get, oh, like, it's really, really modern. back to the Scream Four yeah. house porn. Well, shit. It really, no, is. this is like um, but like even the characters in the movie are like, wow, this house is amazing. Like even yeah. the characters are noticing it because it's like a very modern like yeah. all glass house, and it, which I'm sure there's some symbolism to yeah. that, you know. Um, but yeah, it's you gotta check it out. I feel like people completely missed this movie this year. I think so too. So it came out and in a weird time. It September did. was a slow month so. And I remember um, after it was over like we just sat there for the longest time trying to like take it in and then I, I looked like, I looked at you and I was like did we like it? <laughs> yeah. 
And it, it did it playing into like you were yeah. talking about how it like it had the sixties French music. Yes. It also had these amazing like sixties like Saul Bass like spy movie credits oh, yes. like title oh, sequence at the beginning that was fucking as awesome. soon as as soon as the title started going and the music was playing, I was like, This is gonna be is amazing. It, so <laughs> is it like a hitch is this his Hitchcock kind of um, It's the closest analog? he's ever gonna get. Exactly. To that. The, if you had, Paul if you had Paul Fink get. humor to a Hitchcock movie, then kind of. Well, I yeah. just wonder, you know, like if you go so far as to do the Saul Bass opening title. That's yeah. usually like an yeah. indication of the yeah. audience. Yeah. That you're I think doing. The, I, I yeah. think McHill is right. I think this is as close he's he can yeah. as he's gonna get. I never even yeah. heard of this movie until you guys said that you'd seen it. It was yeah. all like okay on cable. Like there was commercials for it constantly, mm-hmm. and the the marketing was actually genius because it started off very like light and fluffy, like oh it's a romantic comedy, and then like like literally the music drops out and switches to like mm. a thriller, and then mm. like yeah. so it catches your attention every time the trailer's on because it makes that shift really hard. Yeah, and um, I remember some of the um, like Instagram promos for it would oh Blake Lively yeah. got all weird about it she got Remember? it was like um there would be like a picture of Anna Kendrick like holding something and then it would like like pan out and she's actually holding like a shovel at like a cemetery like it yeah. would get like really like dark mm. yeah and Blake Lively all of a sudden started wearing like all these well she deleted and, all of her pictures yeah like everything and they her got account really was blank for like a week and then she like came back and like everything was her wearing like yeah suits she like took on the character yeah everything yeah. Mar- the marketing was really yeah um, really amazing mm-hmm. for this Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's my number five. Yeah, <laughs> Colin, you're number four. <laughs> number four. They probably had to get with Instagram. It's like I'm gonna delete everything. Can yeah, I get it can back? I get it back with but, the dates on it? Right. Yeah. So Buzzfeed like Thompson even wrote an article being like, "What's up with Blake Lively? She deleted her like whole Instagram." Right. Like people caught got... wind of that shit and were like, "What's happening?" Perfect advertising. Uh, my number four is. Four, four, four. Um, I think. Let me think here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is. No. I'm still rewriting shit as we talk. Well, I know what the movie is, but I'm trying to see if I can qualify what I'm about to say. I think so. I think it's the best theatrical experience that I've had this year. And that is John Krasinski's uh, A Quiet yeah. Place. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Great choice. Yeah, because I know that it's a movie based on a, a gimmick. Maybe. I guess you'd call it a gimmick in yep. maybe a lesser filmmaker's uh, in hands. But the idea of like this alien invasion, there's this family that exists uh, in solitary on a farm and all because the aliens hunt by uh, sound, basically. So Mm -hmm. they have to be quiet all the time. I think they actually have a deaf daughter. Uh, so they are accustomed to sign language. I think that's the thing that basically saved them mm-hmm. is that they could communicate amongst themselves mm-hmm. with sign language before the invasion happened. But it's, we're talking about Hitchcock, I think, and especially like you guys know John Krasinski through the office. I've never seen yes. any of his comedic stuff. I think the first time I even knew who the guy was, he was in, was it 13 hours? The Michael yeah. Bay uh, yep. movie about, yeah. uh, yeah, the Benghazi, Benghazi thing. And I thought, you know, he was just the beard, uh, another beard. <laughs> In, uh, you know, what right? if any? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, I like that movie, but you know, I mean, you, the guys you can't really tell them apart. Somebody's going to come back at me like, yeah, sure. you totally can't. But anyway, he's the tall one. Is Jason Clark in that movie? Jason sure Clark's in that movie. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. In a beard. Oh, uh, wait, I was going to say, I'll see right through. The other one. If it's not Jason Clark, it's the, the other guy from Breaking yeah. Bad. Uh, no. That guy. Is, he might be in it too. No, oh, no. I don't <laughs> know. So, you, know exactly. you, you could tell me Jason Clark has been in every movie I've ever seen, and I believe you, because I don't ever remember <laughs> him in anything. So. Dude blends into the wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always get him confused now. I'm forgetting the actor's name. Who, of course you are. He wrote and directed the gift with Jason Bateman. Joel Edgerton? Joel Edgerton. Yeah. I oh, yeah. No, get Joel. Those two mixed and, I do. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do, too, because they're both forgettable for me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I might. Yeah. Um, but this movie is crafted Joel in a way Edgerton like... Joel Edgerton played an Egyptian at one yeah. point. Uh, that's remember that's that. what sets, separates them. Yeah, that is I what saw that movie. Just don't, remember that. Don't forget to add Sam Worthington in that mix. Yeah. Right. yeah there's that. I'm, I'm I know glad he doesn't have a career anymore. I remember Joel more than I remember Sam Wait, Sam and Jai Courtney, he's also in the pool of He's also the generic white guys that are forgettable. Right. <laughs> Sam Worthington deserves to not work anymore, though. I'm glad he's not. I like that guy. I, Why? Because you like Avatar? My least favorite would probably be Jai Courtney of those four. That yeah, nobody likes mentioned. Jai yeah. Courtney. No. Mm-hmm. Nobody at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but A Quiet Place, uh, you know, to see this movie, you know, like I was saying, it's a, a for the, this being this guy's first movie, right, is amazingly assured. And mm-hmm. especially coming from this comedy background that's why i love when you don't watch comedies and these guys come out and do dramatic stuff you're like this guy like knows his dramatic that's the connection though (laughs) like the guys who come from comedy who are so 
uh, so good at doing drama. Like that, there's there's the connections between comedy and drama are so similar that they can come out and do that stuff. Look at like uh, Jonah Hill. I always think it's the connection between comedy and horror works. Uh, You know, the time, it's all about timing. Timing, There's that too, but they also, like, I think the same things you have to do for comedy, I I think it translates to drama as well. Like, Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of guys come from comedy and they can pull off the drama very well. Mm-hmm. Jonah Hill, like I said, being my main example. Yeah, like he's yeah. I didn't see. I missed his whatever nineties. Mid nineties, yeah. yeah. I was that what it's called? Mid nineties. Yeah, it was yeah. around here for like a second. Yeah, I've seen him in other dramatic stuff. Sure, so. yeah. Um, but yeah, this movie in a theater, and I don't know if I would have responded to it the same way if had I have seen it at home. But in a theater, like the uh, the amazing hush that fell over the crowd because it reminds you. You know, in this day and age where, you know, we are watching movies on our phones or on our laptops or, you know, on TV or wherever we can catch them and you can pause them. You can go to the bathroom. You can go get yourself a snack. It is kind of weird, you know, to is it weird? It it's weird that a movie is able to bring you back to the communal experience of watching a movie. And you all have the same right. experience at the same yeah. time. Everybody was quiet. Everybody shut the fuck up and watched the movie. Yeah, they did during this movie. Yeah. And it also is borne out in the suspense is fantastic. The way he shoots and stages the movie is, I think like it's his, he obviously, you know, learned and studied from, uh, you know, old Hitchcock movies or, you know, uh, just the suspenses. It keeps ratcheting up. It has a great payoff, which a lot of movies like of this type is where they fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, his delivers. The ending is like fantastic. Mm-hmm. And the yeah, emotional core of the movie, I think, is like why this is ranking above uh, other similar movies. Um, honorable mention, I saw a movie called The Ritual. It was on Netflix. That's my honorable that mention. Is, that's <laughs> like, yeah. that, was yeah. a, that was one of the best horror movies I saw this year, but it, it didn't have the same emotional core. Not at all. That's maybe the best monster movie. It, I wanted to put it in my top <laughs> know, five just I, because of the monster, but I was yeah. like, I can't. Did but you like, just watch that? Yeah. But yeah, like the good, story's right? very, but like you've seen that movie. It's before. the Blair Witch Project. It's a better Blair Witch Project. It's the best Blair Witch it's Project. It's a, fi- it's a, a properly filmed, yes. studio right. Blair Witch. But up movie. until right. you see the monster, like you've all you've seen that movie a million times. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It like, but it well. does it really good. Yeah, it does. But like the emotional core wasn't there for me in it. Like it was there, but not as much as it was yeah, there in a quiet, in a quiet place. place. Sure, but yeah. I really, it is the coolest fucking monster I've ever seen. Like in any movie, yeah, it's my favorite movie monster ever. I think so. I should watch it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Ritual. Watch, the, watch the ritual. That's yeah. number six on. Uh, this is, yeah, a, it's this is a pro <laughs> ritual household here. It was yeah. so close. It was yeah. like right on the edge of being. In oh, yeah, I know because that yeah. that's where I was going back and forth because the ritual was on my list for ever mm-hmm. and then i was like you know i guess i made an arbitrary decision to like okay if i if if it came out theatrically and i saw it and right. i've watched it multiple times and because the ritual is one of those movies was it straight held, netflix it went to film festivals and then they acquired it Fuck. so it and it, it went to it went theaters. to theaters it it, if you're listening in, in the uk it went right. to theaters there well annihilation uh, uh everywhere else in the world was netflix we're the only country that got annihilation really? in theaters because Paramount, uh, I think it was Paramount, said, just take it and, you know, we don't think we're going to make our money back. So it only Damn. played theaters in, in the States. Everyone that, else, it's a that Netflix movie original. Seems, like made for European audiences and shit. They're just like, oh, it's fucking artistic. Well, they got it on, uh, they could just call it up. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. But I think, you know, yeah, quiet place for the theatrical uh, experience of it, uh, bar none, probably best, you know, just that crowd you could feel them breathe you know we all inhale and exhale at the same time yeah. mm-hmm. you know uh it was very cool and the movie itself i think for pulling that off is mm-hmm. uh probably a genre classic i mean again the 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 idea of the gimmick that it's going to be a movie that's mostly silent taking place in 2018 um and they pulled it off and it doesn't feel like a gimmick movie when you're watching it. No, yeah. not at so all. Not I think, at all. but I think the gimmick will is the thing that'll make it. You know, like oh, there's that movie, A Quiet Place, the silent movie from right. uh, 2018. So yeah, check it out, mm-hmm. Sean. What's your number four? Fuck. Nah, just Sean's blew up my it now. Well, no, it's just because I went through because I have to. I never remember what's released in a certain year, so I had to go through and be like films of 2018. And of course, it didn't. Yeah, here's my list. Yeah, right, exactly. It right. <laughs> and of course, it didn't list anything that was like released to Netflix and everything. Right, so right, the ritual yeah. was not on that fucking list. Yeah, I forgot about that fucking movie. That's a good movie. 
You I'm should have printed my list. Place. Oh, you got all the Netflix it's movies? It's all on there. Is it all? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Man, we should have just done a top ten, because I would have had this I, all we'll figured be, out. This will be a five-hour episode if we do it. Jesus. I, I all right, no, okay. I wouldn't have um, been able to do one. Number four, uh, it was me trying to decide between Star is Born and Den of Thieves, and Den of Thieves wins out. Den of Thieves for number four on my list. Um, I don't get a lot of... Uh, it's an action movie. Um, I forgot who it was directed by. I don't think it matters. But it stars um, O'Shea Jackson Jr., mm-hmm. who is uh, Ice Cube's kid, obviously. Mm-hmm. He was in well, um, Straight Outta Compton. Welcome yeah. to Compton, I almost said. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Compton. We're straight Outta Compton. Um, uh, the way I've described it to people, it's like, it's like Heat Jr., Oh, um, I love you. Cool. Well, uh, but yeah. that's, yeah, I would, oh, have I not recommended this? Wait, is this guys is, is, no, we have not talked about this I haven't movie. heard anything about this Is this, this a Ger- the Gerard, Gerard Butler, Butler movie? Yeah. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Jerry, Gerard Jerry Butler. Butler. As at, at his bloated, kind of greasy best. Like, he's like that narcotics cop who's been doing the job for, like, 15 years, okay. and he's got his special team of enforcers. Like, the cops fucking leave them alone because they handle their shit. Yeah. They don't do everything by the book or legally, yeah. but they get shit we done. We don't ask questions. Right. We yeah. don't ask questions because they yeah. get results. Okay. So, we've got them as a team. We've got um, O'Shea Jackson Jr. and, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pablo Schreiber. Okay. Um, porn stash from uh, yeah, yeah, Orange yeah. is the New yeah. Black if, yeah, you, yeah. if you don't know as the head of like um, the the team who's gonna like they're gonna rip off the Federal Reserve yeah and so there's the whole it's you know it's all, bad it's, cops who say like hey we're gonna go right okay so they're hunting them and there's people playing oh wait both. wait wait so who's who, so the movie's about like all both, both sides both sides right. oh, okay, okay. like the um, Pablo Schreiber is the head of the gang who's gonna like rip off the Fed um, okay. It's a it's a heist movie, um, and then Gerard Butler heads his police team, who's trying to track them down and figure out and stop them. And so, and there's people like playing. Are they playing both sides? Is there a reveal at the end? He was planning this the whole time. Um, there's great action sequences in this. There's a whole, um, you know, the, obviously the famous scene in Heat is them running down the street shooting at each other. Mm-hmm. We kind of get that scene in this movie mm-hmm. um, in, in a great way. There's like a traffic jam, and you know. The fucking uh, the cops are coming up behind everyone, and just fucking shit gets let loose. Machine guns everywhere. Um, it's a gr- surprisingly a great action movie, and everyone plays their parts really well. It's kind of it's greasy, it's grimy. Fifty cents in this too. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people are in this, and it's really good. The story is actually really good. Surprisingly, um, the action is I think top notch. Um, it was a very surprising movie for me. Um, yeah, no, because I remember seeing trailers for this, yeah. and I was like, "This movie is not hooking me at all." Right, and because it seemed like um, <clears throat> it seems like, like a generic. Yeah, like I thought it was like a training day kind of thing. something yeah, we've already yeah, seen yeah. in training. It read that way in the sure. trailer. You and know? I, yeah, I, don't I think agree it, with that. Yeah. I think everything. It may not have. I don't think it came off. Of, yeah, well, sometimes marketing right. movies. Right. Very suck. true. Very I true. think yeah. it came off bad in not in not bad, but just different from what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it. It surprised the hell out of me, and it's a fucking delight. The action's great. Um, story's pretty good, too. Everyone's doing a great job acting in the movie, so mm-hmm. yeah. Fucking number four, Den of Thieves. I recommend it to all of you. I can't believe I've never talked about this. Yeah, no. watch fucking Den of Thieves. You're the you're the only person I've heard like talking about it. Oh, yeah, I recommend it all. I'll bring it in here, and you can all borrow it. I, I own it. I feel like Gerard Butler gets to everything too late. If that makes sense, like like he gets to the type of movies people genre, want to see yeah. him in too late. Right. You know? Like... Den of Thieves, it seems like it's two, three years too late for when we were interested in that type of movie, if that makes sense. Maybe. You know? Um, but like a Widows? I mean, Widows, is is that similar? It sounds like an end of watch type movie to me. Uh, which uh, one is closer to? Uh, probably, I haven't seen Widows, although I wanted to for this year, but um, uh, probably closer to Widows, mm-hmm. I would say. It feels more like a like straight go for it action type thing. Yeah. Um, he also well, did Geostorm this year. I can't well, forgive him for that. Yeah, so. And that might be yeah. the thing that turned people off. <laughs> Geostorm kind of, was terrible. Well, Gerard Butler's reputation at this point exactly. I kind think, of yeah, doesn't sure. do this movie any favors, but I think... I think overseas he's he's like a huge draw, because those uh, uh, Olympus has fallen and yeah. one has fallen. Have you ever looked at like how much those movies made outside of the United a States? Lot, yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> they were like one of the you know top ten movies of the year. Shit, <laughs> they're huge. Yeah. Well, this one uses Gerard Butler to like full advantage. He's like it's he's perfectly sleazy in this movie, and it's great. Uh, I recommend the hell out he of it. He found his yeah. niche. He, I, I <laughs> yeah. think he did. Like this is one of those. that's just like right there, perfect yeah. fit for everybody involved. Yeah. 
Den of Thieves. Uh, my number four is uh, taking a slightly different turn. Uh, it is a documentary called Three Identical ah! Strangers. That was <laughs> what? That was Three Identical Strangers. Almost on. That was almost number four. Yeah. Um, this story of these three brothers is truly remarkable. It's, it's good. It is insane. I, I mean, it's a story that's been around um, for decades now that I think just kind of kind of got lost. Um, but you know, they were in People magazine. They were on TV. Like people knew about them yeah. when it all happened. Um, but this story of these three brothers is just completely insane. Um, it's fascinating. It is absolutely fascinating. To watch fascinating. it unfold in this movie. It's it's story. What's the story? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, this guy was um, 18 years old, going off to college, and once he gets to college, he starts... He's walking through campus and everyone is saying hi to him as if they know him. They're calling him a different name. They're saying hi, hey, welcome back. Yeah, it's they're good all, to see you. They're all welcoming back I'm and glad like, you decided oh, I to missed come back. you. How was your summer? And yeah. he doesn't know anyone and he just can't figure it out. He finally meets someone who comes in and is convinced it's this guy, whoever they're all referring to. And he says, No, you don't understand. You look exactly like him. Mm. And he's like, When is your birthday? Tells him his birthday. He calls his friend and he's like, this dude has your exact same birthday. He looks exactly like you. I think this is your long lost twin. So they li- that, that night they drive out to wherever they were and they he opens the door face to face. It's his long lost brother. They know it. They do their research. They come from the same adoption agency. They're long lost brothers. Uh-huh. It goes on. This, this, so this, that story like gets in the paper. This story is in like, the, yes. I, I, identical strangers reunite yes. at college and all this, this stuff. So it's all over the, the paper. papers and everything. And then this other guy comes across the paper and he's like these guys look just like me <laughs> <laughs> there's a third brother wow so the whole the whole story is you know them meeting and figuring out how this happened and the fact that like they are truly identical like they have mannerisms that are completely identical they have interests that are identical and as soon as they all meet they just have this connection they feel that they're brothers at what point do the ca- does the camera crew get involved in this well, no, this this, this ha- is all this, th- this, there, this all yeah. later on. This is all through and there's slight reenactments. OK, yeah. Uh, to show kind of. Yeah, it's always shown like when they show the young guys, they show them from behind kind of going through. Yeah. Right. Because, stuff. because so it's these, like the story has happened and now we're making the documentary right. or but like we lot. found out halfway through it and we got no, a camera. No, 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 This happened in the 70s. Oh, yeah. This happened in the 70s. These are grown men telling the story. But there's a lot of archival footage. A lot. A lot. Because they were on TV. Because they were famous. Oh. Okay, yeah, because okay, they okay. got famous from it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so famous. this whole story is, you know, the, them coming together and re- finding that they're brothers and then their relationship as it builds. And then it gets deep. I won't give it away, but it gets deeper into how this happened. Yeah. And it's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. And it is so compelling. It is just such a wonderful documentary because it paints the picture so beautifully. And you really feel the emotion from these people as they're telling this story. Mm-hmm. It's it's. It's heartbreaking. There's ups, and there's downs. It's like you feel the joy when they tell the story about like we like how how would we like, found each other? We found each other, yep. and they're like they connect and they're best friends. Mm. And then there's so much heartbreak and there's so much happiness, and it's just such a strange story. It's such a roller yeah. coaster, but it is so compelling and it's so interesting because it, it takes a turn that I mean. I kind of figured it out, but I mean, the people that I saw it with, they're like, I did not see that coming. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's. It's truly remarkable because obviously this is a true story mm-hmm. and that's what makes it so incredible that these things really happen. And, you know, they they allude, I won't give it away, but they allude to the fact that this could happen again. And I won't say why, but or it has happened or has happened in other occasions, in other occasions. Like it's it's just it's so remarkable and it's so beautifully told. It's it's just compelling from start to finish. And um it's a story that I'm glad someone took the time to tell because obviously people our generation we have not heard of this. Right? Yeah, it got lost. Fuck, I haven't shuttle. even heard. Yeah, of it. no, no, it's, it's great. Right. It's it's so it's, it's so wonderful. But I'm sure they were on Donahue or something. Oh, they're on a they bunch of everything. daytime everything. talk shows. They're yeah, on everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. They everything. Got press rounds. They're like um, they they enjoyed it. They did. Yeah, they did. Um, but yeah, the the way the archive footage and the interviews and the way it was all um constructed it's a really beautiful documentary and mm. it was so entertaining and there's a framing device that start you don't realize yes. it starts out at the beginning yes. of the movie but it does and it, then you're like okay so what's happening here yeah <laughs> which it, it's i can't describe more than that but you're just like I, yep. it, it just you you feel 
something is happening. Yeah, there's a lot of feelings oh, in this good. movie. It's very good. There was uh, there was a movie I saw and the, the trailer for this was in front of it mm-hmm. and it was in a, it was a packed house in New York and ah uh, yep and <laughs> I've never heard an audience react to a trailer than the way that they yes. reacted to this one the like yeah. they're like <gasps> and like the oh shits and like the yeah. stuff yeah. people just reacting to this trailer alone like yeah. it, like you it might be the most impactful trailer that's ever it's been a, cut for it's a movie seriously because, yeah, it's, it's seriously mm. incredible yeah. I you know I went to, I saw it in Madison because I wasn't playing around here mm. um, and I took some friends with me and I was like watch this trailer see if you want to see this movie with me and they instantly text me back and they're like oh my god we have got to go see this <laughs> what's it called three, three, three identical three strangers, identical strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. it's a wonderful that's wonderful cool. documentary I recommend everyone watch it it's, it's red box. it might be on Netflix now mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's, it might be on one of the streamers now but watch Find it where it. you can. Watch it's great. it. Mm. Michaela. My Follow number- that up. <laughs> <laughs> my number four is also a documentary. Oh. Um, but mine is Won't You Be My Neighbor, the ah. documentary about Mr. Rogers. So most documentaries. <laughs> the year where we all cried. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so, I saw this in uh, my first ever Alamo Draft House screening, oh, yeah. which was like. This is the only movie I could get into because everything else was sold out. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no. Like, I was supposed to go see a, a screening of Demons, and Demons sold out immediately. I couldn't get into that. Why and she snack. still has seen, seen Demons. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> still <laughs> seen it. No, because I, was, I was like, I'm going to see oh, it on shit. screen in New York at Alamo Draft House. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, Wyatt Snack was hosting, like, a... Like a like a mystery science theater type thing where he criticizes like a black exploitation movie that was sold out. Everything was sold out. Oh, really? wow. Yeah. And this was like a That'd Tuesday. You know, I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ. Okay. But I went, so I went and saw, won't you be my neighbor? And, um, I don't like, I know you guys have, most of you haven't been to a draft house, but like you've been to those premium theaters where like, it's like pairs of seats. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I got, <laughs> I got paired with a stranger because I went by myself and, like we had, we went on a journey because. <laughs> so, <laughs> Were they your neighbor by the end? Of I this mean, thing? kinda. Okay, because like <laughs> just holding so, hands and crying, and just like oh, Jesus. even even in death, Mr. Rogers. Does well, it. they well Amazing. yeah because like so this is a documentary about Mr. Rogers, blah blah blah, well, whatever. So um, directed by Morgan Neville, who's done a ton of documentaries. I think the one I saw by his that I really liked was Twenty Feet from Stardom, which is about famous yeah. backup singers for famous singers. Yeah. And how, like, no one knows who they are, That's but fantastic. they do all the heavy lifting for music. Yeah. yeah. That's um, a great documentary. Right? Yeah. So he's a really good documentarian. And most documentaries, like, you know, going into it, their aim is to shatter your perspective of something, mm-hmm. right? Like, every documentary is going to have that moment where it turns and it's like everything you knew was wrong. Yeah. And then they're going to fuck you up and you're yep. going to walk out and be like, the world is fucked, basically. Like, you're going to walk <laughs> out feeling worse, right? This documentary does not do that. This documentary reaffirms everything you know, makes you feel better about things questions you had it's hopeful and you walk out being like do you know what there i it, everything is okay like it actually yeah. makes you feel better leaving it but they t- they touch on some some stuff during the 60s and some racial tensions and i said like the reason why my name like i got i was sitting next to a black woman and we were like i'm like sitting next to this person i don't know in this intimate like couple's seat you know they're yeah. se- separated by twos and we're eating dinner because it's elmo draft house right. and like they're talking about like you know how mr rogers navigated racial tensions right and i'm in brooklyn new york and i'm like this is an <laughs> yes. experience i'm having right now um but the, i mean this documentary it's not like i kept waiting for like when are they going to tell me that like he was like he a was closet a huge nazi racist. yeah yeah. Right. What are they yeah. gonna tell me that he was a terrible person? Yeah. And like, even his kids, like his one of his sons says that sometime like it's really hard to be the son of Fred Rogers because like that's the closest you're gonna get to the second coming of Jesus. Mm. And really he was yeah. like, he was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life because like it will never be as good as my dad's legacy, basically. And he's right. like, he's like, so I, he just tries to like fly under the radar and not be noticed yeah. as like his <laughs> father's son. And it's, I mean, it really explores a lot of things that like. I, I didn't realize about the production of the show and like mm-hmm. his perspective and it, like I said I just haven't seen a documentary like that where I leave feeling better than when I went in mm-hmm. um, and that's a really rare thing to find especially in any movie but especially a documentary so mm-hmm. I, I think I think you got to see it just because you need to see that different take on a documentary especially like Holly and I talked about the last what five minutes in the movie yeah oh well, everyone in my theater cried several times everyone. like but especially everyone. the girl next to me we were her and i were both like oh, holy shit like yeah. but the last five minutes like they ask you as an audience to like participate in an exercise that really kind of brings the theater oh, together God. so yeah <laughs> so i would definitely recommend like i i'm kind of surprised they made it this high in my list because i was like i mean it's it's Mr. Rogers. I felt like I kind of knew everything there was to know about him. Um, but like I said, I was waiting for that other shoe to drop and it mm-hmm. never did. And I was like, okay, 
that's great. Like the, it really subverted my expectations. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend it. And Gotta for check it those out. of you who don't know, I think uh, Tom Hanks is playing Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Yes. Is that based on the documentary or just the? No, just not, not like, based on the documentary. No. It's mm-hmm. just based on Fred. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're going to have more of Mr. Rogers. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about how the idols we have that we're just praying the other shoe doesn't drop? Yeah, yes. Like, please, yes. Dick Van Dyke, yeah. please tell Has me you didn't touch a- anybody. Please. Has there been a, like a Jim Henson documentary? I mean, there's been I like low budget ones. Has been, yeah. it's been a it feels while. like yeah. he's like in that same, you know, and he, Captain Kangaroo, right? The guy who was, because yeah. uh, yeah. we found out, like, I, I used to watch him when I was a kid and didn't know Aww. until Lee Marvin fucking told the story on, like, uh, uh, was it the Tonight Show or something that Mr. or Captain Kangaroo, like, was one of the guys in World War II, like, went back up a hill and fucking dragged his, like, teammate right. back down. It was like, That's what? so awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, He's right, like, yeah, right, that, yeah. that man yeah, so is on TV now. You know him as more... Captain Kangaroo. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. It was a fucking war here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember reading about that. And I was right. like, Jesus. I remember that. We need more documentaries with this kind of perspective mm-hmm. and this yeah. lens applied to public figures, I think. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, let's promote good people. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure we have the Bob Ross documentary. Is that covered? Is I that out there so. somewhere? I hope there is. Not, a, not, awesome. not, like, not, not a big, high, not a big budget let's one. Let's get a Bill yeah, right. Nye Or at least not going, to a high you know? publicity. Yeah. Like it's not let's get all the like PBS that. people going. Yes! <laughs> I will fund that! <laughs> Viewers like you, Holly. <laughs> you, I am that viewer! I donate to PBS. I am that viewer. <laughs> I love PBS. And well, the viewers oh, like that was the other. That was the other th- reason why I was like sold on going to see that movie at Alamo. Like, okay, everything else was sold out, but also like they told me all my ticket money went to PBS. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. for seeing that movie. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, was yes. that a pre-release thing, or was that? In- uh, I think it was like mm, its first week of run. I think. Okay. Yeah. That's wow. That's good. Mm-hmm. Unless yeah. PBS made the movie. Well, even still, usually I'm sure they were. PBS was PBS involved. Yeah, yeah. They, they were involved, involved but, but I don't think it was strictly no. PBS. Yeah. But PBS Alamo money. does stuff like that, though. You know. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, yeah. one of one of the people. It's on my list, so I want to talk about yeah. it. I'm sorry. Go, sorry. Colin, go. Uh, all right. Well, Three? I mean, Three. so we've had all these very emotional films. And I feel right. like it's coming been an in. emotional early set. Yeah. We're getting it out. This is where we approach the gets controversial fucking... uh, oh, portion no. of our show. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Okay, so. I know it's coming. <laughs> do you? All right, so I'm going to lead into this, right, where I'm going to tell you what my, my favorite movies of all time are. <laughs> What? All right. Shit. All right. My favorite so. movies are all time. I think I really, really, I like. Fucking I could, horrible movies. I think <laughs> I would argue that these are the best movies ever made, but you know, I, it's subjective. And that's mm-hmm. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is what okay. I mean by horrible, like. L- lovely, I love these movies, but yeah. you know they're about people getting sawed in half. Well, yeah. No, 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 no. The second one is The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan. I don't know yeah. anything about Star Trek. Okay. Oh my god! We Except the new ones. I've seen Star the new ones. Star Trek is to right. the Met Wrath of Khan is a fucking work of genius that stands right. outside of the Star Trek series <laughs> and uh, probably Apocalypse Now. And in that vein, oh no, oh god. I think my number three for the year is Avengers Age, or uh, the sorry, Infinity War. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to say Age of Ultron, I'm yeah, going to no, come no, over sorry. the table yeah, and I'm, fight you right now. Yeah. Wow. I, know, I was like, we're I'm, a few years past. Yeah. I'm shocked I am right shocked. now. I know, because, yeah. I am well, because I'm know, the guy I'm who usually I'm sits shocked. at this table and tells you how much superhero movies suck. Which I'm right with you. I'm right with you on that usually, Colin. If not, <laughs> you don't have an animosity towards them, I don't think. No, but, I, I go into each one of them going like, you know, I'm... You go see them, but they're not going to make your list. Right. So this is shocking, Colin. Yeah, I'm shocked. I am shocked myself. Woo. Although oh, I will tell you, shocking. okay, tell us everything. Shocked. I am because I even three? I went and saw uh, what? In number three. number three. It didn't even make wow. five, so it as, wasn't even like a barely Jesus. made wow. it. I know, I know your top. As two one now. of the favorite movies of the year, I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. As one of the, my favorite movies of the year, a favorite experience of watching the film because I think this is the Avengers. Uh, they've been at it for ten years, and mm-hmm. this is their Empire Strikes Back. Uh, yeah. I yeah. was engaged yeah. in this movie, and with the character. I think that was the thing. It's, you know, the first Avengers gave us, you know, putting all these characters that you've seen in these different situations together Mm -hmm. and having them play off of each other. And that's what makes those Avengers movies work. The reason that um, Age of Ultron fell flat was because there was no new characters. You know, it was like we'd already done this and I saw this movie and it was called Avengers, you know. Uh, But Infinity War brought that feeling back because it was able to incorporate even more characters. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there like I was floored 
by this movie on both the production end of it with the amount of visual effects between this and like the Guardians of the Galaxy and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff that I yeah. sit there going like this is amazing and again I it saw is, Aquaman yeah. today and that, yeah, it's even more you saw <laughs> Aquaman today yeah but he nowhere saw, nowhere he, near uh, Infinity War well, sure, you're, you're leaving out half that story he saw Aquaman and Bumblebee today same day Okay, his, we'll his talk brain, about that later. His about brain that later. is probably melted right wow. now. We're getting off track. Okay, but yeah. the, the Avengers. That's what the, I'm the saying. The quality of, of uh, Infinity War above that. Um, I am in awe of the screenwriting prowess. And I'm sure that it is a team of people beyond the three people. I think there's three. There's like a Christopher McFeely's name keeps coming uh-huh. up. Yeah, McFeely. Yeah. 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 I'm sure there's there? just like... People in there who are like, we're gonna crank, we're gonna turn this bolt a little bit more here. Another guy's going, yeah, we're well, gonna tighten I, this up. But a I, right what here. I wonder, because it's gotta be like is, Mad Libs, right? This is you know? why it's impressive to me because I think the Guardians of the Galaxy have a distinct voice. Yes, Thor has a distinct voice. Doctor Strange even has a distinct voice. Tony Stark has a distinct voice. You know, but somehow in this movie. They all are speaking with their own voices. And I'm like, so either you have screenwriters who are savants and are able to like go like I can completely internalize the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, like I mean, mm-hmm. well, I was going to say that, you know, the, the, the Tony Starks and the Thors, they can internalize the entire fucking Marvel universe and mm-hmm. spit them back out again. And like this actually sounds like dialogue that these characters would say, yeah. even though they're now in conflict or, you know, or pairing up with each other mm-hmm. or complementary to each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's amazing. I thought that the fact that that movie worked at all was like that, you know, was impressive. incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's what impressive. I'm but that's why I think I am giving this movie. That's why it's number three because yeah. I'm I am in awe of how well it worked. Yeah, and I think a lot of that had to do with the Thanos character because he really does unite everybody against him and he was like a three-dimensional character which i didn't expect you right because i knew yeah. like yeah there's infinity stones and i've been following this and i know basically what he's going to be doing but <laughs> you, they made him you in the- walked into that theater with a fucking swagger like yeah fucking impress me <laughs> well because i was out, like, Holy i shit, definitely went in like <laughs> but this is where like i have been sitting there for the past you know there has been that superhero fatigue where i've been sitting there going like okay i get marvel what you're doing there's this character thanos in the background and there's these infinity stones that were kind of like you know doling out in these films and this is the storyline and i think that's why i've become impatient with some of the newer movies mm. because it's like you're not talking about the infinity war right. we're not and, but i can clearly tell line. that's the story it's like playing a uh, uh like a uh, multi you know the, the multi uh, what am i trying to say those multiplayer games yeah or whatever and MMO? Side, an, side an missions open, and shit yeah the open world game right, where yeah, you, yeah. you're like you can do this mission or this mission but you really this is the one that's the actual story and that i kind of locked on to that with Marvel right. and it's like you guys keep coming out with these fucking movies every year and I don't care because I want this one to go somewhere and now I finally I have got it but they made Thanos like this uh, this like three dimensional character mm-hmm. which surprised the living shit out of me I understand what his goal is I understand yeah. why I, I actually get... empathize with him a little bit even. but that's like, weird yeah, because basically yeah. they made him like a PETA or Greenpeace terrorist yeah, right? I mean, right. he's yeah. the guy who's exactly. like, like yeah. you people eat meat I'm going to destroy half the world in order to and, and this is the, the cautionary tale I suppose yeah. with that kind of activism yeah. but they made him in a relatable in a way where mm-hmm. you understand what his goal is and the sacrifices that he's willing to make you know, and I'm like, what are we? Are we ever going to see these characters again? Uh, you know, it was like it was an experience. I mean, watching this movie, and yeah, it's big, you know, buttered popcorn kind of, you know. But this is the Nothing alchemy. Wrong with that. I, but right, I don't, and I think sometimes they are transcendent. And I think it's when all the, uh, you know, all the cylinders are firing in you know at, at once mm-hmm. or in sequence and yeah. it's like this movie i yeah i was uh, uh i'm gonna be watching this like for the rest of my life i think it's probably one of yeah. those like i can keep watching that movie and not uh not get tired of it mm-hmm. no well, yeah it's a controversial choice I'm no, sure. I'm for, for you yeah like i i i truly considered p- 
putting Infinity War on my list. Like I bet I had a constant mental battle, but <laughs> when it came down to it, I just didn't want to like, talk. It's I just cheesy. Didn't, it's a no. I just no, we just like can we talk about Marvel again. I just didn't want to talk about it anymore. That's why it wasn't on my list. I was like, you know what? I right. just don't want to talk about it anymore. I literally thought that was it. <laughs> can I put a Marvel movie on my right. list? Right? Like, yeah. Is yeah. that a thing I, I know? Can that's do? what. Yeah. I, like I, I had, I had that. I was wrestling with that. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, you know? It feels like I've almost yeah. eliminated. I was like, of course there's Marvel, and so we'll set it to the side yeah, and not yeah, mention. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah but, but we, this we is did an it before, extraordinary though. Marvel. We did movie, it before though. We put Civil War on our list. Oh, did we? We did. Okay. Yeah, we did. I think that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, again, but that like, was the last movie I think before Infinity War. Like, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that was the last one that really registered. Right. It with was me. just like holy shit. Yeah. It was like Avengers, Captain Marvel, or sorry, Captain America three. And Infinity War, right. I think yeah. I like the, the, the those standouts. are the big things in the storyline. Yeah, yeah. Like again, you said yeah. the main storyline you're latched onto and the one you're interested in. Like yeah, that, those were it. Yeah, yeah. And I put Spider Man on mine last year, but that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. But I just I didn't want to talk about Infinity War anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with what you're saying. All wonderful points. Totally. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I saw Aquaman today, and uh, you know, it's it's a big, much bigger movie. I mean, because that's what they do, right? It's like every movie bigger, has to be apparently bigger better. and better than yeah. the last one. But, and I'm not dogging on the movie because ultimately, I think maybe I did like it, but uh, it uh, maybe I really had problems with uh, a, a lot of the logic in that movie where I didn't in Infinity where I think because not you all, you have gotten to know these characters and in movies prior to it so that's kind of it's unfair right you can't just go and watch this movie and maybe say it's like this is a great one of the greatest movies of the year because you have to have seen the prior Marvel right. movies and introduction yeah. of the characters and you know who they are so when you see this it means more to you you know yeah. what I mean uh, but yeah. so did Empire Strikes Back you yeah. had to see Star Wars True. before you saw Empire Strikes Back so mm-hmm. indeed uh, Sean what's your number three well to continue on with the Marvel theme uh, my number three is Spider-Man Into the spider I thought you were going to say Ant-Man and the Wasp. No, although I did enjoy that movie this year more than That's the first. That's a divisive movie. More than the first Ant-Man. I had fun with that movie. But yeah, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, this is my number three this year. Um, we've gotten a lot of Spider-Man movies over the years. Mm-hmm. We've done the franchise. We're on our, what, third iteration third. of Spider-Man yep. at this point. Um, we're even doing movies where we shoot off like secondary characters into their own franchises Mm -hmm. like you know there's stuff to go on there uh this movie to me felt like the perfect i I keep using the word distillation i don't know if it's the right one of spider-man it feels like pure spider-man at this point like everything i know about the comics and what they get across about peter parker as a character what he stands for are what you, Spider-Man are you does. a comic book reader i mean you know these I, i've i've read i've uh, i've read I, i've read a few comic books i'm not an avid reader i'm not picking up weeklies and all that shit um i'm just curious because like i i don't read the comics I, I, I go yeah. back i read the big event ones like you know gwen stacy dies and shit like that like i go through and read those civil war i go through and read those did you watch uh the the spider-man uh the cartoon that was on in the uh, the Fox Kids cartoon. Yes, okay. yes. Oh, okay. yeah, all the time. But those were, out. I think, adaptations. Somebody yes. will correct me if I'm wrong. I think those were adaptations of the comic stories. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, watch the shit out of that one. Um, so I, I feel like I know a little bit about Spider Man. I don't know a lot about Spider Man. There's uh, obviously people out there who know way more than I do. But this felt like what Spider-Man does, what he stands for. The writing in this movie, um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are involved in this movie. They didn't direct it. Um, I believe they produced it, and I believe there was um, some credit on the script as well. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller obviously mm-hmm. did. Yeah. Like the 21 and 22 Jump Street and everything, and they, the Lego did, movie. Yeah, and got yeah. fired off a of Solo. Fired off a of Solo, yeah, which, yeah. Uh, after watching this movie, I'm like, fuck them. Take a chance and like let those guys make a Solo movie, because at least maybe it wouldn't have been boring. Um, but this movie, like, w- and getting all these uh, characters together, because um, you get, uh, you get, uh, you, I don't know if you know about the movie, it starts with Miles Morales, who is yep. Spider-Man in a universe where the original Spider-Man dies, this is known, no spoilers, um, uh, and so he, it's his journey into becoming the new Spider-Man, and in that process, um, there is, uh, um, 
an event that happens, which brings a bunch of other spider people into his universe mm -hmm. that he's got to deal with, and at some point get spider back to the universe. Spider people and creatures. Spider people and creatures. Spider Ham is in this spider movie. Ham. I have read Spider Peter. Ham comics. Did you? Yes. Oh my I, God. I may have one, oh my actually. God. Yeah. Peter Porker. Peter Porker. I remember, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> All the elements of this movie, the writing, um, the script is great. Um the voice actors they got for all the characters are fantastic. Um, Who's in it? Uh, Jake Swanberg is the uh, kind of the old, I've been Spider-Man for 20 years, mm -hmm. Spider-Man. <laughs> he's, so he's Peter Parker. He's he's Peter B. Parker. He's one of the Peter B. Uh, Parkers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The original Peter Parker is Chris Pine. He plays like 10 years, 10 years into being Spider-Man, cool Spider-Man and everything. Nick Cage plays Spider-Man Noir or Spider-Noir. Spider-Noir was my favorite. <laughs> he's great. There's a few jokes with him that are awesome. Uh, I think I was the only one in my theater that laughed at his jokes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, his are great. But they're so, it feels like they're so subtle. They are. And like, he's not I going for a joke. It. He's just being Nick Cage as Spider-Man. Yeah. You're just like, that's funny. It's like mm. It's not the obvious joke, like but it's funny. 1940s Detective Spider-Man. It's, it's fucking perfect. funny. Because he's it's using, so like, the dialogue from that era, which is great. Yeah. And he's fighting dudes. It's great. It's funny. John Mulaney plays Spider-Ham. Mm -hmm. uh, which is perfect for that. Haley Steinfeld is Spider Gwen, Gwen yeah. Stacy, um, and then there's the uh, uh, the Japanese kind of like the uh, the, uh, the anime the, the anime yeah. version of Penny Parker yeah. with her robot and everything. Uh, but the the voice acting is great. The script is great. The biggest thing about this the cinematography, the visuals, the visuals God. of this movie, and it's not just the look because the animation is fantastic, and it's the closest they'll ever come. Like I don't need it to be like to look like a comic book, but they do that comic book styling in this movie that is fantastic. It's, it's, it's subtle. What do you call it? it? It's uh, more or something it's, like that. It's, the, it's the, the dots. The, yeah, the dots yeah, in yeah, like yeah, a printer. The, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's subtle because you don't necessarily it's, it's always notice edges. that they're there. Right. It's, it's on the really edges cool. of everything, and they do it very well. But not only that, it's the camera work. Yeah. And to say that about an animated movie, I don't know if that's weird, but the camera work in this movie is fantastic. It mm -hmm. feels like it takes the views of like what you would expect if you had two people talking to each other who were Spider-Man and who were standing on the side of a building. Like just, you know. Uh, yeah. What what vertical on the side of a building as spider people would do just having a conversation like the camera work is fantastic in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Um, there were some emotional moments in this movie that had me choked up where I'm just like, oh, God, that's right. Because each spider character is dealing with their own shit, obviously being brought into this universe. Some of them don't want to go back to their own because they like fucked it up. Like with the relationships and it's like it gets emotional, but it's also teaching Miles Morales like he's the newest Spider-Man to this whole group. Mm -hmm. So obviously, like it is it's an origin story for him. And they do a funny thing where they go through and kind of do the mini origin story for each one. Yeah. But <laughs> but they go through it. No, but you, you give say, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but like, they do it. But it's real quick. It's yeah. like yeah. 20 seconds, 30 seconds of like, okay, so this is where we're at. And it turns into a gag because they keep doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. But they do it real quick and they get into it. Um, but they and, but the longer one is Miles Morales. But the way they go about it is it's really heartfelt. And it's got all the other spider people kind of telling him like, you're not ready for this. You'll get to this. Um, this is my experience with this. Mm -hmm. And... They're all being kind of mentors to him, and it all comes together and leads up to a very big moment where, like, he does get to a point where he, like, saves them, it, and he becomes one of the... He is Spider-Man. He becomes that. Yeah, it's the moment when he really becomes Spider-Man. Right, and it's yeah. a great journey, I think, mostly the comedy in this thing. It's very funny, and uh, it's just a, a really good Spider-Man movie. Everyone feels like Spider-Man, and I don't know how to like say that more. The like that feels more like Spider-Man than anything we've gotten thus mm. far. It's really feels like it. So, uh, I mean, fucking Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. It was really good. And I really enjoyed it. So that's Spider-Man's having a good year because there was that uh, video game that yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. everybody apparently is everyone like this is one it. of the greatest. Everyone video games. They it. loved it. Yeah, I haven't played it, but I saw my nephew was watching a bunch of the cutscenes or something yeah. on YouTube. I was going to go out and be like, I need to go rent this and play it. I'm like, buddies, because I feel I need to play this game. Because now I think they have the costume from. Um, yeah, which does. Well, the costume from that game shows up in this movie. So, yeah, because yeah, I just want to hear it's like yeah, a it meta. Kinda, right. Okay. And there's there's a little glimpses of even uh, Donald Glover shows up. Anybody here watch Community? 
Yeah, you know? yeah, of course. You know, yeah. when Donald Glover wakes up in the season two premiere and he's dressed in the Spider-Man thing yes. and jumps out of bed, yeah. that little clip shows up in this movie for That's like a amazing. split second on the TV oh, in I his uncle's that. house. I saw it for a split second. I'm like, oh shit, there it is. When, are we, just gonna, when are we just going to let him be Spider-Man? Like, uh, it's we too just late. Need to let him. He got to be his, uh, his uncle, yeah, Miles he's, Morales' he's his in, uncle. He's in Homecoming. He's the Uncle Aaron <sighs> in Homecoming. Yeah, he's um, he's the Prowler, or he's going to yeah. be the Prowler. Yeah. They knew what they were doing in this movie. Movie. Like it is, it feels like a pure Spider Man movie to me, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. That's my number three. It's also yeah. like, uh, it's, I don't know, risky. It's a Sony movie, I see. Yes, it is. It is. But the fact that they have an actual Spider Man series still going with Homecoming and whatever mm-hmm. the next one is, mm-hmm. and then, you know, that was shared with Marvel. This yeah. is shared with Marvel. It's got the Marvel logo on the beginning of In it. In association with Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact that you can launch, like, another Spider-Man series yeah. while your other Spider-Man series is still actually happening. <laughs> right. And then I mean, we have spin-off series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's crazy. I don't know if that's unheard of, but that's definitely weird, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, a bold new move for like the way that movies can, you know, right. Hey, yeah, we're just going <laughs> to, we're going to do Spider-Man live action, Spider-Man mm-hmm. cartoons. Yeah. I'm glad they can do it. Cause I want to follow like this animated Spider-Man. Yeah. Make another one. Sure. I'm in. Yeah. I, I liked it a lot. My my only thing was it it and it's it's so funny. I, I feel like I yeah, I just said this about your other movie. <laughs> but I I feel like I feel like it's it's Why do you hate my movies? It's focused for a younger audience. I wish it had been a little more mature. I did take my kid to this movie. Yeah, that. exactly. Like I wish it had been a little more mature. I think it would have been really fantastic. I, I liked it and but I then, agree with but everything. There's you're another Spider Man series for that. I know. I, I know. Like, yeah. Maybe I, I that's guess it. I mean, they're trying to cover the quadrants. I guess my, my thing is, it's just that was the one element that made it not quite for me. I don't know. I laughed I a lot. My kid looked at me going, what? Oh, because there yeah. was enough shit where I'm just like, that's funny. No, I know was, you don't get it, I, but it's funny. I laughed. And so, you know, I, re- I really loved the Warner Brothers joke with the, with the spider ham. And he said, that's all, folks. And they're like, is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, they did. They're just like, it can't be legal. It's that like, was is this funny. what we're doing now? I yeah. liked that joke. There's some, there's some, yeah. And there's some just like blatant stuff where I was like, oh shit, they're talking about this? What are they doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's, it's like good fourth elements. wall stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Tons of fourth wall stuff in this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's good. So this Good is like shit. the younger uh, version of like de- the Deadpool kind of uh, probably sense yes. of humor. Yeah. Okay. But I think hey, wait. Anybody see uh, Once Upon a Deadpool? I have not. No. Okay. No. I don't. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I don't need to. See I really it. don't. I'm an adult. I can watch the R-rated version. I don't exactly. need to uh, see the. PC. I didn't. I don't think it's doing. Show, I, I will say they showed a lot on the in the tra- every single trailer. They I appreciate for it. it's a marketing the, genius. I was like, I appreciate it's the marketing. Yeah. It's marketing. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a great way to make more money but yeah. i mean i don't think it is know. though i don't yeah. i think everybody saw deadpool too yeah 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 so <laughs> holly, <laughs> holly. Uh, your number three um uh, my number three um was actually a netflix uh movie or more of an anthology really Ooh, uh, oh, i know what this is <laughs> we're talking about the ballad of buster scruggs ah. yep. yes. a coen brothers uh anthology on netflix and it was it, it brought the western to life in just the most wonderful ways. Um, I really, it was one of the movies this year that I was just like, this one made me enjoy watching a movie. I didn't have that a lot this year. And this one really, I was like, this is it. Because of the tone you're saying. I think it, yeah, I think it was the tone. It's, it's just such a wonderful mix. Um, it makes you happy. There's some sad parts. Like it's. Would just... you mind sharing of the six? Which one's your favorite? Oh, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many? How many of them? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Which one's your favorite? Just start there. Where, oh yeah. God, which one's my favorite? That because I, I have a clear favorite. Do you really? Yeah, yeah I do. I, really I have do. not finished this. No. What? No, oh sorry. my God! I, I, I watched I had, it all at once and was like, uh, "There's not more." <laughs> I, I had to leave at one point. I oh, never got back God. to it. Like I, I ended yeah. up in the Liam Neeson. Um, you yeah. didn't make it that yeah. far you then. Got, no, not very far. You know, no. I'm, I well, thought that was that was the that was the lowest moment. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that one. I, I mean, it's a beautiful story. You know, very uh, oh, shot very Yeah, it's really. Oh God, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. Um, 
the opening one is amazing. And that's the so one that, good. That it gets it's its title so from. good. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the actual the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. The, the title. The story. fucking dialogue oh, and the it's, writing it's, in that is it's so snappy. Yeah. It's, oh Jesus! It's yeah. wonderful when he walks into the bar and it hits the dust off him and it's <laughs> yeah, the yeah, 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 him. yeah. It's I love what he wonderful. does to what's, what's his name? Uh, Brown Yancey Brown Clancy, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. Oh what yeah, he does yeah, the yeah, game is fucking great. Oh my god! It is. It's hilarious and it gets. It gets that spirit of of a western, but it makes it hilarious. But it's, it's just, it, because it's, it's the like, Cohen brothers, right? It is exactly. So, yeah, exactly. it's filtered through the Co- the right. Cohen brothers' exactly sensibilities. It. You know, when you walk into a bar and you just and they start telling, oh, this there's the legend of a guy who's around here. It feels yeah. like we're into that story of the legend of this person. And what, so. what? Yeah, what makes it so wonderful is like Buster Scruggs is basically telling his ballad. Like he's, yes. mm-hmm. you know, it's not like. Oh, there's a legend of a man, and someone's telling you he's he's his own story, and yeah. it's just yeah, it's it, great. He the mu- like the music. Oh my god, mm-hmm. it was so. I think every single yeah. one of them did. Every single one of them have like a song. Or was it just uh, no? Maybe no. The second one definitely didn't. Right. Yeah. Which one was the second? That was the James Franco one. Which I I did. <laughs> I didn't think I would like that one. I really liked that. One. I know. I yeah. think that yeah, might be my that one, one. Might be my favorite. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they talked First about time. this. Yeah. 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 I was, I was <laughs> that like, was that's funny. where the meme came from. I was like, I've seen the meme and I hadn't seen it yet, and I was like. That one, that's funny. That, as soon as James Franco, because I'm not a huge Franco fan, but as soon no, as he, but he screen, does certain yeah. things very well, I was right. like, yeah. oh man. And then I, that one was just wonderful. I didn't. <laughs> that one has almost no dialogue. In it has too. very yeah. little dialogue. It's just, all, it's just situational, and it's so f- funny. It's almost like they're, they're not so much. I, mean, I was going to say different styles, but there maybe is like a unifying style. To, the six stories that I think originally when they talked about this, it was going to be yeah. a series for yeah. Netflix, yeah. and then they just because of the running time. I, on each of them, some of them run long, some of them are mm-hmm. short. Uh, you know, they put them together. It's one movie. It's maybe like two fifteen or something like that yeah. in, mm-hmm. in the running time. But so there's six stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, personally, I thought you know, I, yeah, I would say this is one of the. I was uh, like toying again. This yeah. is going to be on my list at some point. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I would say like three of them. Three of the stories are great. Yeah. Being the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the yeah. first one, James Franco, the. No, I would say no. Really? really? Yeah, I like the. Oh, that one. Um, Do you like the old prospector? One had me. I liked that one. I lot. love the prospector. I, so I, we have obviously. Yeah, yeah. I know. Was, no, I thought it was the girl who. Oh, what oh was it the, called? the wagon train. The wagon. Yeah, the, the wagon, wagon train. train. I thought that it was one the emotionally one. got me. That, that one. Yeah. Me. I, that was like woof. the most western oh, western no. one. It really that. was. I don't like that one. Yeah, yeah. And then, I like that one a lot. I like the last one also, but I mean, it's interesting that we yeah. have different ones. But I would say, yeah, three great ones, two good ones, and one that was like. Man, that was because I mean, Neeson ultimately, one. yeah, ultimately, I like all of them. I yeah. mean, it just the Liam Neeson one is is the the weakest link. We know this, but I, I but that's the idea of it. And the it story's is, not bad. It's just not bad. compared, it's, I think, to the ones editing around. Editing is it. not good, and it's, it's yeah. like it, it goes it's on. It, it's yeah. very repetitive. Yeah. I mean, I get it's, where it's going. And it's, right. I was I was watching that one, and at a certain point, I was like, "Is there a point to this?" I mean, it's it's like, it's, yeah, because they keep doing that. Yeah, it's right. I get that. It's purposefully repetitive, yeah. which I understand. Yeah. Um, and I right. I do appreciate the tone that the ending brings because it, it's the Coen brothers. So at some point yeah. you have to have. Well, that. they're all all the stories are ultimately in one way or another about death. I mean, they're Tragedy. all, they are. They're yeah. all tragedies, they are. Yeah. which we which we learn. I mean, the, the last story brings all that together in a common yeah. theme. Yeah. You know, the, the only problem I have with the, the last one was the one where while I like the story itself, it was yeah. where. The limitations of like the digital photography or whatever the hell yeah. they were doing. Like I was aware that, you know, I've never seen a Cohen Cohen brother movie where I could see the like the outline of the where they had separated the dude from the green screen before. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> oh, really? But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like it's very artificial uh, in a way that like disturbed it's me because jarring. I was like, this should be, you know, this is the Cohen brothers. This right. should yeah. be like a game. Top kind notch. Of stuff. Yeah. 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 So uh. I think. You know, stylistically mm-hmm. uh, or thematically, the writing is strong. The Wonderful. performances are fantastic. Fantastic. Because they from everybody. bring in like Tyne Daly from, uh, you know, Cagney and Lacey. And they, yeah. Uh, yeah. they bring in uh, Saul Rubinek. You recognize all the faces, whether or not you know their names. Even like the little every, every you're person, saying, you're like, I've seen them yeah. in something. Yeah. Because yeah. They, they all, I think, you know, the Coen brothers are these people who can command people, uh, you know, just yeah, want to work yeah. with them because yeah. right. they are. Yeah. They are. So yeah. they can yeah. get anybody. Yeah. yeah. We want it. You want, Clancy Brown to show up 
you know, exactly. for a, right, for short a amount second. of town, yeah. Uh, yeah. a small amount of time, that he'll do it for the Coen brothers. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I, I loved it absolutely. I think the, the Coen brothers did a wonderful job bringing their version of the West to life. It just we, I, we, we do all love a we all around here love a, love a Western. Coen brothers Western. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, do. Yeah. we do. We do. That's uh, True Grit and uh, yes. I don't know if we'd call well, No Country for Old Men's a Western. It's yeah. a modern. Really that's is. a Western. Yeah. 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 That's a yeah. fucking Western. So, I, mean, I like their yeah. Westerns. I want to yeah. see more, yeah. of their Absolutely. Westerns. more of them, please. But yeah. this please. is like the fact that this didn't come out theatrically it's blows a me away. I can't believe it. I know it, it, I think it, it went it to got, festivals. I think it got into the thing yeah. where they just like didn't know what to do with it because it ended up being Was it financed by Netflix? I can't remember if they gave them money for it. Yeah, I don't know if this was the I don't know because it went to festivals. So I and I don't remember if Netflix will do that like festivals. They do. Us. Yeah, because but, if they if they release it in some capacity, it gets them because uh, you have to be placed theatrically somehow to be uh, right. in qualification Awards. for an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so I think it did that. Like it was is, in theaters yeah. for like a week or something to qualify right. for an Oscar. But it's like which it did qualify for Oscars. I think the ballad of the ballad got is on the short list. Yeah, they released it, a lot of Oscar yeah, short lists it, this week. The writing is just it wasn't originally. Oh, it's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Was it originally intended to be a TV series though? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 For like, Netflix, I, which yeah, is so, why yeah. which yeah. is why I'm like they didn't know what to do with it. So yeah. They, like decided on a route, which is not. I'm so yeah. frustrated yeah. that it's not though, because that means we probably won't get more now. Right, and I want more. Like I would yeah, like to get like seasons. Yeah, like a one off, and then the, yeah, I'll never come back. I feel to like that. this is all we're gonna get. And yeah. it's really that's disappointing. I, I, yeah. But I kind of think that in this case, that might be a better thing. That's no, probably, yeah. I want more. I'm like, I, 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 I no, want I want more, yeah. but I'm not. I'm not so well, sure that would have yeah. been good. I'm with you. I think. I think we want more. That's that's where you leave them. Yeah, right. You know, leave them always wanting more because when we get more, most times that's where it's like, yeah, well, you can't rewrite another fucking chapter of the Bible. And that's a Star Wars movie. Exactly. And everything yeah. that You've they never do. seen the Bible. And, and and I'm with you. Like, <laughs> wasn't the New Testament a new <laughs> chapter of the Bible? That's true. But I mean, you can't write another chapter to the Bible now. And that's ah, what yeah, but, but, but they just wrote this now, so that we can write another right. chapter. Yeah, but, Colin, <laughs> somebody has written a new chapter of the Bible just because it's sitting in their basement yeah. uh, with all their other mm-hmm. weird yes. religious shit going yeah. on in the walls. Yeah. Doesn't mean it you doesn't get exist. What I'm yeah, yes, yeah. We yeah. Know. But I'm but I'm with you. What what anchored this movie is it's the writing. It's gorgeous. It's and the characters are phenomenal and I, mm-hmm. I love characters and they're just all written so beautifully and I definitely think everyone should watch The Ballad of Buster Scruggs yeah, the, I mean the the this is the thing I think uh, uh, it feels like a lot of writers are missing like these guys uh, have like a florid way with the language yes. yeah yeah uh, where it, they remember words that everybody else has forgot. Yes. They have a, a large vocabulary. Yeah. Yes. And they also have like a sense of place for the time. Yeah. And yeah. You know, I didn't live in 1850 no. or 1870 or whatever this is set. So I don't know that it's accurate. But uh, well, you're you know, delighted I, to hear it when it does. It come sounds across. like it's period. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? And I guess no, that's the thing. everything yeah. about it was believable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like, Ooh. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> if nothing else, you want to believe that that's how they spoke. Yeah, like, yeah. you're just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. That's my number three. All right, my okay. number three um, is a movie I watched very recently and that I cannot <laughs> stop thinking about is the Clove Hitch Killer. Oh, dear, yeah. Oh, wow, guys. See, this, oh, I want to uh, see this movie. Like. From, I, this is on Shutter, right? This um, is Shutter? It's Shutter? on Amazon Prime. Is how oh, okay, I watched okay. it. Um, Wait, to buy, you have to I buy rented it. it. I've okay, heard this title, it. Um, so you got to tell me yes. all about it. I no, don't tell too much. Yeah, I no, no, I, I can't tell you a <laughs> lot. I, kept, I really I kept can't. About it, and I never watched the trailer for it. But I watched the trailer for it last night. I'm like, I want to. I don't want to know any more about this. I know nothing. I had only heard about it like literally three days ago on another podcast, and I was like, Why have I never heard of this movie? It's not getting any press. It's not getting any marketing. So hopefully, we're doing our part here. Dylan McDermott is in it, turning in an Oscar worthy performance that I no like one's ever going to see. Man. It's yeah, but like like you might like him, but he's not good. You know what I'm saying? Like in most things, he's not that. I good. I didn't say it was good. I said like, he's yeah. a very <laughs> CBS <laughs> procedural type of man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this movie, I love him in Steel Magnolias. <laughs> well, don't we all? <laughs> this is this is he's incredible in this movie. Um, all I'm going to say about the plot of this movie is there's this town where they've had an ongoing serial killer. Um, they've it's had like 10 to 12 victims thus far, but it's been dormant for about 10 years. They haven't had a victim for 10 years. The kids now that live in this community are growing up kind of being like, well, who the fuck was it? Is this person still around? Or is this something we should worry about? And that's, it's kind of from like a high schooler's perspective of that. Um, if you're alone, sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. If you're a true crime fan, 
uh, yes. you're going to be like me and the, oh, the movie's going to open and you're going to see something and it's going to make your gut drop into your butt because you're, if you know details about major true Guts crime cases, butt. yes, like you're going to be like, I recognize that from this. I recognize that from Ooh. this. And like the research and the, the attention language. to detail in this movie of the cases they pull things from mm. is incredible to the point when I, when I was watching it with fans, I was like, this is going to happen. He's going to go in here. He's going to do this. And this is going to, and it is like that for two thirds of the movie. And then, in the third act, it takes everything you know about these actual true crime cases and flips it entirely. Uh, and the, I, I had like I was my stomach was in knots watching this movie the whole time because I was like I know what's going to happen and I'm going to have to watch it. I'm going to have to witness it now. Like it, Dylan McDermott is so good. I didn't know he could be this good. I really didn't. I didn't know he had it in him. Um, I really wish I could tell you guys like what it's about because you would so get it like what I'm saying if I could tell you but I can't because sure. no one should know you gotta watch it it's amazing it's beautifully shot it has high production value I know the title sounds like a shitty shitty movie the title sounds like some like asylum movie or something the it sounds is a, is a knot right the Klovich is a type of knot which if you know true crime that will head you in the right direction of what right, yes. of what this is like <laughs> leaning towards yes. um, because they say that like early on like oh he was named for that for the type of knot and I was like oh, I got it bingo and like I was able to like be five steps to the head of the movie because of that um, it's it's almost entirely in the daytime which Ooh, for which any is true for, crime movie yeah. is weirdly unsettling yes and there was and if you can be scary in the daytime yeah it's you got some and there's a lot of those scenes where like the camera's just looking through a doorway and like the people are moving in and out of the doorway and things are happening the camera doesn't move at all for long amounts of time mm-hmm. and that favorite. was like driving me crazy and those. like <laughs> there was like there was an infomercial on in the background while something was happening and that was really disturbing because like that's a like, that's clearly like you're at home in the afternoon type yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Just the regular yeah. shit's happening. Yeah. yeah, so like the environmental design and the thought put into things like that. I cannot believe more people are not talking about this movie and I only heard about it a matter of days ago. It is incredible. I can't wait to revisit it. I feel like the person who made this really likes Fincher movies but like mm. instead of it all being in the dark it's like all in the daytime because like Fincher yeah. movies are all in the dark they are they're just <laughs> but, dark in yeah general. they're all in the dark <laughs> yeah um i can't i really like i'm so frustrated that this movie didn't get more attention because it's so good and yeah, it's gonna get you're completely literally overlooked. saying all the things that i'm yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Just, like, all the right words so i've good. heard about this yeah. but it's like man i watched summer of 84 which was another one that yeah. sounds to me they sound similar i'm sure they're not but that's like yeah. the, it's a kids' adventure kind of that there's this a serial is more killer like in there. Gonna... Modern, cleaner finish. I would <clears throat> okay. say like it's 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 present day, but like and its pace moves very quickly. Um, and you're you're with the like like a teenage character as his perspective throughout most of it. There's like a Rashomon moment where you follow different people's perspectives. That's really cool. Mm. Um, you, everyone's got to check this out. It's totally worth the six bucks it is to rent on Amazon Prime. Like it's, I'm so mad that like no one told me <laughs> earlier about this movie because it's so good. Mm. So Clover Hitch Killer. It's, Clover Hitch. Yeah, Clove, Hitch. Clove, Clove, Hitch. Clove Hitch. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, it's not a great title, but. Clove that's Hitch probably killer. yeah because yeah. that's the, that's the that's type working of knot. against it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah probably because I heard that title and I was like what the fuck is yeah. that about but well, shit. yes Colin what is movie. your mm-hmm. number two two we're on number two number yeah. two I, I think I know it yeah you know I what this know is because it's gonna be one or two you know yeah, yeah, yeah Sean's got, got me figured out you yeah. probably I got okay. it. Okay. I, I have an idea of where it's going are they we're gonna figure out which order they're in no I think they're gonna be the same I know what they are all right I feel like I know what they are. I have a good idea. Well, like, this is uh, uh, the worst experience that I had in in movie in a movie theater this year, and I say that by the psychic weight of this movie. Like uh, it, uh, yeah, it was just man heavy. I mean, movies aren't always supposed to be light and fluffy and fun and games. No, sometimes, sometimes when you're watching a dreadful. horror movie, dreadful horror movies are supposed to make you feel uh, horrified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I suppose mm-hmm. uh, this movie is Ari Aster's first movie. It's called Heredit- Hereditary. Mm-hmm. Um, which I also I'm going to go out and say did like, you watch this last night? They, yeah, I yeah. did. Oh, okay. Oh, did you, just, you just recently I watched just, it? Just recently Less than 24 it. hours ago She's I watched this movie. She's not an A24 fan, folks. This is the third strike, man. Oh, shit. They're just All not right. for yeah, me. Yeah, but you didn't like The Witch and what was the other one? Well, the it Witch comes was at like, night? It comes at night. Well, I didn't like It Comes at Night. No. I will
will say this one I liked the most out of those three. <laughs> oh man, I don't know which. It's I think, the best piece I of think shit I like, I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Yeah. Of those three, I think the witch is still my favorite. I think that was my last year or the year before. The year before, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, apparently, I have a thing for satanic horror movies. Shocking. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Shocking. Shocking. I saw this one. Like Colin's gonna fucking love this. Yeah, movie. I I loved Hereditary um, <laughs> because. Uh, there's so many th- uh, facets. Uh, number one, uh, it was a movie that uh, I, I deliberately tried to avoid because I think yes. the buzz came out of Sundance yes. and they said, like, this is the next big horror movie. And it's all and coming out like, like a year in advance. Yeah, there was a, way too we much buzz. Like, I don't want to know anything yeah. about the movie fucking ever movie. Made. And then you go see the trailer and the trailer shows you like this movie, which intrigued me. I admit, I was like, I was, I'm like, okay, I do want to see this, but I'm like, don't show me too much. But I'm watching the trailer going like, I really don't know what this movie is about. Right. Which I loved. I love the fact that I saw a trailer that didn't give everything away. I yeah. saw something today. It was what about the dog's life or something like that. And at the end of it, the dog gets lost. Right. And at the end of it, yeah. like the dog comes back to is the this a dog's journey home. Dog's journey home. It like is, in the they fucking show the trailer. Fucking, they, what like, happens? What? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. whole yeah. movie. The whole yeah. movie. The whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't trailer. need to see this now. That to is, be fair, yeah. uh, some of the hype for this movie was coming from the people involved in it. Alex Wolf straight up said he feels like he has PTSD from making this movie. Like there were people involved in this movie that were like pushing this, the hype. He should have this, PTSD. Uh, yeah. This movie. I right, mean, but like that's the, a convenient marketing ploy as well. It might be true, sure, but it's also a marketing. And this gimmick. is one of those movies that feels kind of uh, unsafe for the that. people yeah. who were in the movie. <laughs> and I am going to say right now that my favorite, I think, best actor, well, best actress performance in a movie is Tony Collette for this film. I mean, like actors take note. Go watch what she does in this movie. Have you seen a TV show called The United States of Terror? Yeah. I haven't. She's in it for four seasons where she plays someone with multiple personalities. Yeah. Right, see, she's I've done this seen before. Her, I've, I've seen it before. I've only seen her feature work, but that's what I'm saying. TV. Every time that she has, I mean, ever since, I mean, she was in Shaft and I thought that she was like, you know, eh, but The Sixth Sense, I think, was maybe the first time that she, I took yeah. notice of her. No, she's great. I'm just saying, like, she's, she's done this actress. before. It's yeah. not her she, first go she at it. Well, she but she's based it. on <laughs> this film Little this Sunshine. year. She's also yeah. very good. Yeah, she's very good in that. She's, I think she's, she's good always good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. even in the Fright Night remake, she does stuff she, that yeah, is, like, beyond yes. just being in that yeah. movie. Just being there. She's and a yeah. great actress. Yeah. She's a great actress, and this is the best performance that I saw this year. Uh, was in, and because it's it, it just it's heart wrenching. I mean, this movie is horrifying. It's a horror movie, but it, you know it defines the the word horrifying. I sat there the whole way through it, kind of like. I mean, I, I could do a facial uh, version of how I felt, but that doesn't do play well. You know, it's kind of like... Just do it for us. You're just like... <laughs> the whole way through the movie, right? You, you just, really? Uh, oh, I felt like I saw so many things coming in this movie. See, I didn't. Oh, and see. that is like, the, I think, why it worked. Um, going back at it, there were things that I picked up that made sense later on that I was not consciously aware of that I was being fed mm. uh, the information ahead of yeah. time. Is that the same experience yeah. you had? Yeah. Like on the second watch, you're like, oh, that was there. This right. was there. That was there. There was one thing, uh, you know, uh, that I. Uh, uh, what? What? I can't what? say because no, there's a bunch say. of people who haven't seen it out there, <sighs> and I, you know, I would encourage you to check it out. But uh, to 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 basically say that it is a, a, a satanic movie, I suppose, gives something away. Yeah. But there were shocks and surprises that I had in it. There's the whole movie is just this uh, domestic drama that it takes place uh, uh, about. It's like looking at multiple generations of one family and just the um, resentment and yeah. pain, uh, you know, from past things that <laughs> they project a strong thing. on other people. <laughs> oh, shit. For like, the, I mean, there's scenes I in this movie. I don't feel like that's a strong enough word, even resentment. Yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. feel like it's oh. more than hatred. That. Hatred. Yeah. 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 Straight up hatred. There is some like, I mean, there are some scenes in this movie that cut to the bone, which is just basically like three people sitting at a it's dining the dinner, room yeah, table. The, I have a question The dining room scene is fucking... Whoa. As someone who just recently watched this and is probably still processing it, 
who are we supposed to like identify with in this movie? Who are we supposed to grab onto and like who's Tony the protagonist? Collette. I think it's Tony I Collette. don't agree because she does some she makes some horrible choices and well, yeah. does some terrible ne- things. Well, right, yeah, yeah we're just uh, but I even think... from the first act, yeah, though, but you're just watching her. I think you identify. So with, oh, there so you're isn't saying... one. There isn't someone I'm supposed to like identify with. No, no, and follow her. through this movie. Well, it's a, I, but you're I, saying she made, makes it, decisions that you would. I not make. don't find anyone it, in this it, movie likable or identifiable at all. It may oh. jump, but I, I mean, there's certain points where I'm just, uh, Tony Collette says things and does things. I'm just like, I understand that. Uh, okay. You, the first moment. Yeah, we're not I, saying that you should do no, these no, things, no, but no, I no. understand but, the well of right. hurt but that my, it's coming my from. My questioning who the protagonist was started so early on in the movie before any of the actual horror set in. When she demands that her teenage son take her younger daughter to a high school party with him, I was immediately like, what kind of fucking parent would do this? What is wrong with you? What, like, no, what no, is no, your no, perspective? She, yeah, but she's trying to socialize. She yeah. sees that one of the kids But is she says, is better... there going to be drinking there? And she seems suspicious of the fact that there's going to be drinking, but then forces him to take his sister. I think... It doesn't make Because that means that, like, he no can't sense. drink. Yeah, he yeah. can't drink. He can't drink if the sister's there. Right. But, she's oh, th- what, to... that's... that's that, this is some which, terrible parenting. Which... Holy shit. This is uh, but I think it's real. I think that, that I is don't, real parenting. I don't think that's real parenting. <laughs> no, I do I, not uh, think that's real parenting. I don't think an actual parent would send their younger child in that situation. Yeah, but it's just, it's just, just to prevent their other one from that drinking. That was the but moment saying, where I was like, who is the protagonist in this movie? You're saying should or would. I think a lot of people do. I think it's I think it's real. Right, whether you like, would or this not. This is what yeah. people do. I really I don't I'm think I really do that. I don't think that's a thing that happens. I don't think I would do that. Yeah, I think... I don't know, but that's the way it no, read to me anyway. No, because then you're just exposing your younger child to this uh, more adult activity at a party. Yeah, people are not smart and do shit yeah. like that. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. So who's my protagonist here? So you're here? saying you couldn't relate to it because it doesn't make sense because, because no, everyone's making so you're trying to grab decisions. Onto yeah, someone. and yeah. no one But is, I don't think anyone in this movie is making some a moral decision that you're going to agree with. Right. I, that's my point. So where is my access point? I, but I don't I, feel like I have one with I, this movie. You don't, I don't necessarily but think you But you empathize with them, don't you? I don't empathize with anyone because they're all terrible people. Oh, See, I empathize with them, I do because shitty of, things. Yeah. But well, sure. I, I, I accept like that. Like really because, shitty things. Like, I accept that like because they're super human. extreme. I accept that because there's a, like a wide variety of yeah. human experience. It's not like necessarily mine or the way that I would approach right, this. But, like, but in but a movie a, making experience, you need someone to follow through this movie. Yeah, I followed Tony Collette. I guess. Right. Yeah. I mean, if it didn't work on you, it I, didn't work. Because she was just as bad as everyone else in this movie. And like the, the bad people in this movie are so much more extreme than the bad people in any other movie. Like the, everything in this movie is pushed to such an extreme. Well, yeah. I will grant you yeah. that because the stuff that eventually that the you find that out says. about this family and this, it's like, it's like these are people who went through uh, psychoanalysis. And the stuff are, she says to her son bearing, is straight up unforgivable. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Whether yeah. it was a dream or not, it's straight up unforgivable no, but to I, even think that. But I guess I still saw that as this is a representation of like an actual human emotion. Like, I don't think that you, it, it maybe, feels, maybe you shouldn't, you know, and this is the thing. In, in you psychoanalysis, you're supposed to say, bring all this stuff up. But it feels like a truth. Yeah, but if, yeah, that's, it, it, that's it. That's, it feels it like, like these are truth. true things are, they're, they're, they're not sugarcoating anything. No. They're telling each other the truth in a way that's like so, uh, raw and un, fucking, yeah, yeah just, unvarnished that it's yes. like, Jesus Christ, this even, is Even like Tony Clark has the reaction. She says it and she's like, this to me. But yeah, that yeah, one yeah. didn't even happen. Though, that's my problem with this movie is half the stuff you see in the trailer and half the stuff that is like actual horror is dreams. It doesn't even really fucking happen. Uh, but it's representative of the feelings that these people have. Yeah, but and who cares relates- if it has no actual consequence? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm it's remembering their subconscious most of it thoughts, actually, but it's all dream sequences. Uh, I remember most of it actually happening, and then there was. I there was just certain, watched yeah, this less yeah, than 24 yeah. hours ago. A lot yeah. of it is cut to someone waking up, like jarred awake from their nightmare. That is yeah. most of the stuff um, until you get to the third act. Well, third act. It's is a like powerful shit, film. But- Powerful. Yes. I mean, like seriously, I, I when I said I haven't had a worst experience in a movie, it made me feel terrible. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, Just you know, like, there are few movies that Dread have fear, that though. power. You know, to actually just make you feel awful. This is one of them. I don't know. I'm not saying but everybody Dread wants is to feel than that. Fear. That's not the same thing. We've talked no, about but, this. Yeah, but it's not fear. It, it's but it's, dread, it's, yeah. No, it was hor- it was, I was horrified. I was horrified by the stuff that came out of people's mouths in this movie. Horrified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just the, the the psychic damage that this family unleashed in each other. Yeah. And then as it w- kept going, because I was like, I'm watching like basically a really 
fucked up version of a lifetime movie or something like that. And as it kept going, then it became more like a cult. And then I'm like, I'm more into this. You know, I think <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Some people will check out. I was like, this is grabbing me and pulling me even further into it. And by the end of it, I was like all in like, this is one of the best movies that I've seen this year. And you got to check out hereditary. Sean, what's your number two? Guess what, Colin? <laughs> My number two is also hereditary. Yeah. Holy smokes. Holy yeah. <laughs> Michaela, I think Michaela's just leaving. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. Um, I, f- I feel the same things you do for you this see it in the movie. theater? Colin. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, yes, I did. I wasn't going to miss one. I mean, I don't know if that qualifier means anything, but like. It's, well, there, there's no, there's about, something to be said of the theater yeah. experience, obviously. Um, and, it's like I paid money to feel this shitty. Right. Yeah. But it's also like you, you go into movies like this to be and it, it, to see as it's happening, like the dread you experience, like during certain scenes, like the coming home from the party scene. And that's all I'll say about it. But to experience what happens in that and everything that happens in that sequence up to Tony Collette coming, waking up the next mm-hmm. morning, mm-hmm. like you, you can almost feel mm-hmm. that experience from the rest of the crowd, mm-hmm. like everyone experiencing that same feeling. And for a movie to do what they did in that, that first of all was just like, holy shit, we're not fucking around here because that is. In in scenarios where you like think of shit, where you're just like that would be the most horrifying thing in the world. Like if that happened to someone, or if I did that to someone, and then I just went off and went to bed. Like that is the most horrifying shit to me. That's mm-hmm. scared. I have bad dreams about that shit. Yeah, maybe that's where it works because you're not supposed like a person in a movie doesn't behave that way. They yeah. would be her- behave in the idealized way. Sure, but this feels like it's getting at like. The way that people may right. actually react to stuff. Yeah. Where it's, it's like, it's... It's so traumatizing yeah. where you just don't know how to be at that point. Mm-hmm. And the way it's played in scenes like that, it is that is the most horrifying shit you can put in front of me. Because I feel every moment of like, because you, you see what he's doing and you know what's coming. From that, and it's just the it's fucking horrifying. Mm-hmm. That scene, um, like we said, the dinner table scene is fucking shattering mm-hmm. because I understand that's a good word, it, it is, it's <laughs> shattering. I understand what Tony Collette in that scene, I get it, I get everyone's emotions around that dinner table at that point, and it's fucking raw and it feels real to me. And it's acted, I think, superbly by her. I get. Her yelling, I get all of that. It's, has she been on? Uh, has she been nominated for awards this year? Not uh, she. New York Film Critics Award, the Gotham Awards. I um, think she won. Yeah, uh, um, won. I think she won the award. Yes. Um, I, yeah, the, I don't know. The New York like, Film Film Critics. I think yeah. she won for that. I don't think LA Film Critics has happened. I think no, it has happened. Um, she got. Did not get a Golden Globe nomination. Again, I've mm. said this before. I think that's a uh, crime. Um, because, and I don't know if it's because of the genre of the movie where it's getting ignored or what it's have you. It's because everyone's seen United States of Terra and she won a bunch of shit for yeah, that. But that's based why. on this performance in <laughs> this movie in this year. That was four seasons of a TV show of her doing the same uh, but I, thing. Uh, it doesn't, I, it, I don't think that matters. Play this. No, yeah, it it's what you for do Golden in Globes, it does because it's TV and movies. Is that show uh, on this year? No, no it's, it's, it's been, been over like, for a long time, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, um, but and that this, show, that that show has a different tone than this, a completely different. Yeah, it does, so. but the performance is very similar. Mm. Yeah, I felt bad for her, like as an actress. Yeah. I'm like the the things that she had to do felt very. Uh, See, I didn't because once again the character was just as shitty as everyone else, so I didn't feel bad for her. I didn't empathize with her at all. I don't find them to be shitty people. Oh, I find I, all I of find them, them terrible. I find them all flawed. I find them all to be. Uh, I, I I find them all very human, and there just happens. I think there's an obviously an extra element to this whole thing. Like as we find out later, it happens to be more of a supernatural element, mm-hmm. as you think. Um, but I think everyone is just. It's every experience everyone's going through is fucking horrifying. And it feels like, and if I don't think enough attention is given to uh, Gabriel Byrne 
oh, in yeah. this movie. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's also going through something. But, oh, yeah, he yeah. but like his way of dealing with it is not dealing with it. Right. Right. So like and that's it's a thing that like un, that's un, why he doesn't get any tension because he chooses to not deal with well, it. Well, it's a. It, it, but as an actor, I suppose like part of the thing, you know. As an actor, you want to get out on the stage and be the one who has all the attention mm -hmm. coming on you. His part is like one of the hardest because yes. it's not an attention because he has to yeah. underplay right. yeah. you know? everything. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying you have to give credit to the slide. guy because yeah. it's like you can read what's happening with this guy, but he can't, you know, like be the big, the bigger no. uh, performance. Yeah. I have a question for you, too. Have you seen a movie called Paranormal Activity 3? <laughs> yes. Do you feel like this is a way more art housey remake of that movie there were shots taken directly from that movie in, in hereditary i will never watch paranormal activity 3 that's the best one actually it is the best one <laughs> it's the best one i would that's recommend fine. yeah that's paranormal fine. activity it is the best 3 one. it's the I'm same gonna, story i'm not gonna watch it and uh you remember that part in hereditary where the sketchbook is flipping on its own and drawing stuff that's well, that, that scene is exactly in paranormal yeah, yeah but that lots. came before this movie so that doesn't mean they took anything from it uh, the story is very similar, though, as that well. That doesn't mean it came from it. I'm saying it's... I'm just saying, like, if you're going to give this movie a lot of credit, maybe you should watch Paranormal Activity 3. It's a good uh, movie. I don't... Uh, it is a good movie. I'm, uh, sure. It's a solid I won't movie. disagree with that. I think for a directorial it. debut, like, this guy is extremely... I mean, like, even in his shot composition, his camera moves yeah. and the pacing, and, like, this is... Uh, yeah. Definitely, he's one of those guys where I'm like, this is the, one of the racehorses that you go, like, all right, what do you got yeah, coming what's, next? Yeah, what's your next thing? Yeah. I will say that because I had seen uh, The Witch before this... Um, I, I, I felt at a certain point I knew where we were going. It didn't happen until later in the movie, but I knew where we were going and I'm just like, okay, I get it. I wasn't shocked by it because I felt like I had been there before. Um, so it wasn't completely surprising that we got there, but, um, it felt natural to where everything was going. I did, I uh, and not understanding everything that came um, in the movie, because there is a bit of exposition where Tony Collette finds books from her mother and everything. And you're that expected explains, to read like five pages well, of the book. It explains yeah. payment That's bad directing, and in my opinion. the whole thing. I did read an article later that kind of explains. Oh, the, you had to where, read an article to understand this movie, is for sure. I understood the movie as it was presented to me. I to do further research, I went and did re more reading on it. It's not to take away from the movie. I got everything I needed from the movie. Um, but, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you said you had to go read an article and I like, didn't say I had to go read an article to understand this movie. I got it to further develop certain you elements shouldn't of this have movie. To do that, though. The most controversial choice of the night. Hereditary. Heredi yeah. Apparently. Uh, so I wonder you what, should see it. To I wonder find what out. Michaela's worst is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At this point, yeah. Um, no, because I don't be want, the, pos I don't want the possession blowback, so no. Okay. I'm not gonna, oh, did you get possession blowback? Have you not been here on the episodes? We've gotten possession oh, yeah. blowback like three times in a oh, row now. Like our yeah. only hate mail is about possession. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not gonna I'm not that, gonna wait, bring hate the mail. The movie on. possession. They hate the, the movie. Movie. No, the, no, our, the hate, our the take on yeah. it. Oh yeah. We yeah. Are so not smart we're not smart enough. That's right. 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 Yeah, so, right. so I'm not gonna and they I'm and not they, gonna get on my soapbox and anymore they about hereditary. Called out me and Michaela for yeah. not understanding. Specifically called out. So well, fuck them. No. That's um, what I said. Well, yeah. Well, just don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't um, care. All right. But number. All right. My, number two, Hereditary. Um, I felt a lot during this movie. It's. Uh, uh, I yeah. It's definitely. I think one of I the know what your number one movie is. I think so. Uh, I think I know what both yours. Yeah, is. you're yeah, probably right. Probably right. <laughs> um, but fucking, I highly recommend Hereditary. It did. Uh, it affected me, mm -hmm. to say the least. Yeah. Um, Holly, what's your number two? Uh, my number two, well, I I can't really say much because it's hereditary. I'm just kidding. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not. It's, not. it's not. It's not. I it's quit. Not. <laughs> it's the bar I, and it's the the I quit. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I promise. <laughs> but I will say, my number two has already been talked about, so I won't say much. It's A Quiet Place. I loved, oh, nice. I loved A Quiet Place so much. It was such a spectacular. We saw it together. Movie. We did you see it together. You saw me crawling we, out of my did seat. Did we all see it together? <laughs> no, I know we me and Toby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Remember, that's right. I was having like a straight up panic attack watching this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I was your shit. losing my shit, shit <laughs> watching. This. You were losing I, your shit. We were yeah. in like a relatively empty theater, we did. and that did not help. No, because it was like. So there were just like it the, was so like quiet, <laughs> yeah. Sound beings coming up, yeah. Shit. But the people that were in there, it's the same experience that Colin had. They were 
dead silent. Everyone, yeah, everyone was, was so silent. quiet during this movie, I and felt, it was really. I, felt, uh, I, I didn't want to. I was chewing on something. I think I was eating nachos during the movie. I was like, <laughs> there were people in our this. theater that had popcorn that didn't eat it. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. they did. They, I they think were that, like trying. And you they were, can't be the one oh, chewing no. during yeah, the definitely quiet. The movie, <laughs> ten exactly. Scene. The movie started and like the chewing just stopped because <laughs> yeah. like oh it's actually dead silent. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I think they thought like oh maybe once you get past the cold open it'll be fine. And yeah, no, no, full popcorn. It's one of the downsides of like. During the waterfall scene, they're all like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, "This is the <laughs> time." To go. Yeah. Just the uh, the downside. Did you have? I mean, it, or do you become extremely aware in those moments of like what's going on at the theater next door? Uh, <laughs> Actually, it depends no. If there's a big action I think, movie, I think out we there. went yeah, at a yeah. good time. Yeah, I think we went at a good time. I think if you, I think if your theater is next to like Avengers and IMAX, yeah. that's oh, probably yeah. not a good thing. Right. But no, ours there wasn't much infiltration. It was mm. it was all right. I felt very uh, immersed. When yeah. We were oh, it, yeah. So, yeah. I was. We. I think we were all completely engaged yeah. in this entire movie. Like, just no distractions. Mm-hmm. It was so incredibly intense. It was. I, th- I think we. I think we agreed that there's definitely some uh, signs vibes going on in this movie. Oh, for sure. Which, which is fine by me. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's something I think we're all okay with. You know. Cool. Um, I think we retroactively need to like, as a community, like as a nation, need to revisit signs and. Maybe, I think we need to not shit all over it. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, yeah. I, I, absolutely. Like, I don't think anybody shits all over signs. First of all. I Second it, of all, I think we it did it for this under, podcast and that shit got lost. Yeah. No, yeah, I feel like it. I think it falls under that period of Sh- of Shyamalan where people were like he's a joke yeah like no, that was that's un- why that was no, when that was they still pr- liked it. that was prime yeah. Shyamalan that was yeah like, that was that prime, was Roger prime Ebert, Shyamalan four stars, it was like, like the happening or the lady in the water that broke it lady yeah. in the water broke yeah. it because yeah. right because oh, then because yeah. then it was like or the six, village six cents had just happened I think what yeah. signs was the last like yeah because it was the three yeah. it was, uh, and then the village came after unbreakable and signs the village came after him that was the one yeah that was so yeah it was still prime Shyamalan Vamos children Vamos that's like my favorite part of science. Uh, the village is uh, still great. Mm. I'm just gonna put that out there. Mm. So a quiet place. Um, <laughs> a quiet place. Yeah, I, I thought it was just brilliant writing. I mean, we talked about it before. It's there's so little dialogue, but there's so much happening in this. There's so much wonderful interaction between these characters, and a lot of it is done in sign language. There is subtitles, so there is like a language happening, and that's you know obviously that's what that's what pushes the story along, but for it to be just so much physical communication in this family it's just really incredible to watch and the the suspense is so impressive i was just amazed by by the writing of this movie and i really enjoyed the monsters i really did once they come on screen i was like these are actually like really cool i was nervous that they were going to be really hokey but i actually really enjoyed them great considering yes. that the final design wasn't figured out until after everything was yeah. shot yeah. yeah. Is that so true? Like, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. They had no idea what anything well, the, looked like as they were shooting. Whatever the auditory device, I mean, obviously, you're going to have like a they monster were, that were right, keys obviously. off a of sound. It's right. Like that. Yeah. But they didn't know cool. the the design, final design of those movies, yeah. those yeah. monsters, until that movie was like getting finished. <laughs> mm-hmm. It does still have a kind of a, it feels like, I don't know, derivative. It's a, it's a design aesthetic that it feels like we've been moving toward in movies. It, I keep going back to like Patrick Tatopoulos and like, his uh, monsters, like the Cloverfield, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, which is which is right. set the tone for a generation, right? Of monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that oh, the first yeah. one. That's yeah. absolutely like it, is the, it is because like I feel like we didn't have monster movies at that period in time until that, right? Yeah, the resurgence. I, I, that I mean, that yeah. was the resurgence, that, right? Yeah. Like little like pockets of a face would open up, like yeah, that's the, yeah. right, just, yeah, just that design. Yeah, came about exactly. Of that, like you look at that. Star Trek had those monsters yeah. as well. Yes, because um, yeah. he designed those. Yeah, yeah. And, st- and but still watching this movie when we actually saw the monsters, even though it's similar to things we've seen before, it's still it, it still had had a realness to me. I mm-hmm. still I still like uniqueness. Exactly. Yeah, it had its yeah. it had its own its own feel to it, and I I think it was very well executed. Um, can we talk about that fucking bathtub scene? Mm-hmm. Holy yeah. shit, that was tense. See for see, I still wasn't recovering from the stairs scene yeah. at that point, so I was still, <laughs> I couldn't oh, process the nail. The nail. Yeah. Yeah. Like 
Emily uh, Blunt on the stairs is what like I had me like up in my seat. She like, was losing my mind. No, yeah. no, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was physically squirming. It was, if, it, if it hadn't been such a quiet theater, she probably would have been yelling. <laughs> it was yeah. to the point where I fancy I was like, "Do you need to go outside for a minute?" And I was like, "No, I don't. I'm just just let me like live this. You know, just yeah. let me get through it." Yeah. But, but he was like, "You're like I think that was his way of being like you're making a scene stop." But is like, "Do you need to go outside?" Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. I was like, I, w- I will say we did have a moment that we we thought of Sean though because when he when they're in the kids like room her loft or whatever it is and she's got the canopy above her bed. Oh, I, leaned sexy over, I leaned over. I was like, sexy netting. Sexy netting. <laughs> <laughs> my ear and that's when I like got into a giggle thing. Yeah, just like, is yeah. sexy netting soundproof? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that started a whole giggle fit. That like then, oh, then yeah. we had to like lean over and be like, listen. Yeah. So one time Sean said this on the. <laughs> 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 yeah, basically. <laughs> Sean fucked up and said sexy netting. Yeah. And he was never lived it down. Oh, it's such a wonderful joke. Yeah. It could become um, a pop, uh, podcast meme. Yeah. Oh, it should. Memos. Have your, have your dad work on that. Yeah, my dad work on that. My dad's and, a meme uh, expert now, so. I'd like my face on that. Yes. So, yeah, I, I thought this was a wonderful directorial job by John Krasinski. I was, I mean, you know, as someone who is obsessed with The Office, Seeing him and coming to this, I had the same feeling as watching Get Out and being a fan of Key and Peele. I was like, oh my mm-hmm. God, the yeah. range. This mm-hmm. is fantastic. I was so impressed. It was just so wonderful. I thought it was absolutely brilliant from start to finish. It was such, it was one of the most gripping movies I've ever seen. It was truly remarkable. And we said the ending is spectacular. It's It pulls the whole movie together with just a, a perfect... Uh, perfect crescendo. It was just wonderful. Um, that's, yeah, crescendo. Yep, crescendo. that's yeah. it. A good word. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Also, yeah. we just yeah. we just keep leveling up uh, Emily Blunt's badassness. Yeah, Emily like, like, Blunt. Blunt. Why is she not up? like a superstar yet? Why is I mean, she not she, like she? She, is, she, she kind I, of is. Is she, she like a how? Like, do your parents know who she is? Yeah. I feel like my parents don't. Yeah, they do. Uh, like, I mean, especially now that she's married. I'm gonna. I will ask them this weekend. Yeah, yeah. If they know who Emily Blunt is, guys, when you're home, when you're home with your parents, ask them. Do they do they know who Emily Blunt is? Yeah. And this is pre. Mary Poppins returns. Not it post. is. Right. It is. Like, post, they'll know. They'll but like, yeah, yeah. From, uh, from the, the Wolfman. The, the I mean, live everybody die. knows her. From nobody that. knows. Nobody that. knows her Looper. from that. From the Live Die Repeat movie. Yeah, yeah probably. Looper. I would say they know her from the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yes, they would. <laughs> Let's, that be was, yeah. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. And that's not a bad thing. She's no. great. I like that movie. She's Don't great. They know her from the girl on the train, which we spoke about. Jesus. But she's been putting in the time for so long, and it's why it's across genre. Across. Yeah. 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 So many genres. Yeah, yeah. Horror, and, yeah, and I have to say because it doesn't always work. Props to a married couple doing very well together. Mm. Oh yeah. wow, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and it yeah. doesn't always work. It, it most of the time I would say it doesn't. It, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's a dangerous area. To so go to. yeah, I think everyone should see a Quiet Place. I think it's a spectacular movie. Mm-hmm. Number two, my number two. Uh, we talked about it already, but the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Um, yep. mm. So I was late to this. Uh, Holly and Colin have both watched it before me. We're talking about it, and I finally got around to it. And wow, it feels really good to be like hugged by the Coen brothers again. Yeah, like, it does. It's like, I mean, Hail Caesar like was really disappointing to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Very especially much because so. I love them. I wrote papers on them in college. Like I... Like they are always this reliable constant for me that like I know I can go visit like you know like relatives that you like to see every once in a while you can go visit and like they'll make you feel good about yourself and like oh it, they it, tell good stories yeah or just like it's a nice escapism and like yeah. Hail Caesar was not escapism at all mm-hmm. and like it just it just didn't work for me so to see them back and to see them say my favorite word Western I'm like oh my god yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and like. 2018, like we had Red Dead Redemption 2, which was like an, an amazing, like okay. Does the I, Western genre live with anybody else right now mm-hmm. besides the Coens? Like uh, we're getting and we us get, <laughs> and far, us, yeah. Few and far between, like we get like hostels with Christian Bale coming out of yeah. Now, but does yeah, it but like really go? The, I don't know. Like I, Western West. Yeah. Every like, once in a like, while, it pops that, up. Like, yeah, Coen Brothers. Right. No true yeah. grit. This one, like, yeah. Who else is doing it? Ah, uh, Jesus. Three ten. Like, whoever I was did three ten to Yuma. Yuma. Yeah, but yeah. He, did, he yeah. hasn't done anything yeah. else. No, I wish was, it would uh, be more of a thing. But like, if I was allowed to say it, um, my my best movie of the year would be Red Dead Redemption Two. I think, like, <laughs> like if I was allowed to say that for this podcast, that would be my answer because honestly, the story in that game is better than any movie I've seen this year. Uh, I have cried multiple times playing that game. <laughs> it is very emotional. It is it, it is the best western I have seen in a very long time. And this this anthology reminds me of that um, because when you're playing 
uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, every person you come into contact with can take you on this whole tangent story, right? And I feel like every character in Buster Scruggs has their own story you could follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this world has so much texture, mm-hmm. um, both literally, like, as in, like, the visual effect has so much texture and, like, figuratively. There's so much depth, and I love that about the Coen brothers. Is their will- world building is very thorough and very dense, and... I just like I didn't realize how much I missed them until I got them hmm. back, you know. Yeah. And yeah, because what was it? Burn after reading, and uh, and that yeah. was ugh. yeah, yeah. yeah. burn Caesar. after reading was but not true great. Grit. True, true grit, true grit, was great. It. Like go great. back yeah. and watch that movie. True grit yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. That's one of my favorite it's westerns. Great. It's I, the, really yeah. great. The new one. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's better yeah. than the old one. Yeah. I think it, it's way better than the old yeah. one. Yeah. Did you watch the trailer for this before you saw it? No. No, I, I watched. Cold. I watched the trailer first, and I seriously just got like warm feelings. Yeah, oh, see, so, I did. <laughs> so my fiance and I sat down and watched the whole thing at, at, all together, and like he texted me like two days later, and he's like, "I'm still thinking about that." Mm-hmm. Yes, like, me too. Yes, like, and I was like, "Well, what's your favorite?" And he, his favorite is completely different than mine mm-hmm. too. And, yes, but that's what I love about it. But at the same time, I'm not. I'm sad that it's not a TV series because I want 22 episodes of this, mm-hmm. you know, instead of six. Um, and granted, there are some weak ones that I'm just like, let's get to the yeah. point. Um, and there are some great ones. And when I was watching it, I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't more star power coming through in the stories. Mm-hmm. But I, but like that's also not their style. No, so I get it. You know, yeah. I kind of thought it'd be like, whoa, and this person shows up, and this person shows mm-hmm. up, and holy shit, there's Sam Elliott over there. And like yeah, but stuff they like kind of work. Like Tom Waits shows yeah. up. I mean, it's just right. it's from the breadth I know. Of, of cinema, right? Yeah, you know, it's uh, like that was. Show up. I think that one was my biggest surprise when the old Prospector one started. I was like, is that Tom yeah, Waits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I, I don't know excited. when the last time he's had like a yeah, role right. that yeah. much. Yeah, you know, and and like the, focus. the Prospector episode in particular, like that is a moving painting. That, oh, like, it's yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. The, it's and, like, gorgeous. Some of the CG is kind of uh, too smooth, almost like a like a motion smoothing type thing, but I feel like that's yeah. intentional. I feel like they want it to look like a moving painting and not like an actual real mm. uh, place. Like, that like you're watching like, a scene. Yeah, like, a, like you're yeah. watching something that doesn't really yeah. exist. You know, yeah. it, it, I, I feel like it's intentional. Like the way the deer moved a couple I, times, I, I almost, was like, what? I almost but, thought it was like they didn't want it to be too cartoony, but almost like it should be like in a very old western when the background was clearly a painting. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what it felt that's like. That's kind of how I, I, I see what you're saying. That's yeah. kind of how I felt about it. But the, the Coen brothers have a way of, of saying a lot without saying a lot. Um, there, there, a lot of times the way the characters are saying dialogue or what, what they're saying doesn't actually mean anything and you're supposed to kind of take in the whole scene as a whole mm-hmm. and make your own conclusions and uh, I think oh is it episode three that was Liam Neeson, was yeah, Liam Neeson. The Liam Neeson one, yeah. that one is a perfect example of someone repeating the same thing over and over again over and you're and supposed over. to follow like the story bigger than what they're saying yeah um, and you're not supposed to listen to what they're saying you're no. supposed to be watching yeah, the no watching. Yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. and um that's probably my least favorite one. That was my it's, least. Ever, yeah. it's everyone's yeah. least favorite. Yeah. One. Okay, 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 I'm glad we're all the same because yeah. I was yeah. like, so I should continue on past yeah. that one. Yes, get, oh, yeah. get through it, and the end of it is good. Okay. There was, yeah, there yeah. was, a, the, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the, the thing. The end's good. good. It's it just a good, takes too long to get yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That exactly. one, that one could have been ten minutes long. Yeah. Yes. And it was 22 minutes long. Yeah. So, um, and, but that one, yeah, that one, especially like the, the payoff is so small for what you have to go through to get to it that it was yeah. like, okay, I, mean, I get it. I, I get it. Cause they're purposely making you want it to end because Liam Neeson wants it to end. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I felt Liam Neeson to be, uh, underused in that. Yeah. I felt like James Franco was appropriately used, um. I, I found his story the most compelling yeah, and I most um, tense. I found it to be very tense and stressful to watch. Um, and, you know, there's a meme for it now. So yeah, I'm sure you've seen it at this point in time. <laughs> but anyways, you talked about it a lot. Uh, definitely check it out. I mean, you can never go wrong with Coen Brothers unless yeah. it's Hail Caesar. But even still, like, <laughs> that's still probably better than a lot of things you could watch. So, yeah. Colin, what is your number one? Uh, number one. Well, you're I know, me, one. You're I know what you're feel guilty one for not putting the Ballad of Buster uh, Scruggs actually right. on the list. Now, now Colin, now because I feel like yours and mine you are both have the same. You now, I'm have, surprised that yours is the same. Right, I mean, now, right, so I, I, I know I, what it is. I by, bet by you two are going to be the same. So, so we all the, know what so it is. Same time. Okay, so three, two, one. So yeah, three, two, one, go. I want to say what I think it is too. All right, three, two, one. Everyone. All right, three, two, one, go. Wait, three, two, one. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 I'm describing it right now. So uh, this is how we'll do it. Three, two, one, name the movie. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, 
One. Mandy! You are absolutely right. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm doing this because we should discuss this yeah. together. So okay, so it's also it your it number all, one yes, movie. Yes, it's also my number one of the okay. year. I knew and it, again, I knew it. And again, <laughs> I knew it, yeah. Surprisingly, considering how much I disliked I know, his previous because effort. Because I sit there and I don't see the, di- okay, the difference so, between l- Ladies and gentlemen, we I did... don't see the difference either, Colin. Okay. <laughs> Just so, putting that out there. All right, so <laughs> we, uh, we previously, so this is a movie by Panos Cosmetos yes. starring Nicolas Cage. It's called Man. Andy, we previously did a episode on this show about Panos Cosmatos' previous movie, which was called Beyond the Black Rainbow, mm-hmm. which I love, and I brought it here thinking <laughs> everybody would like dig this movie, and it was vitriol. They hated it. Everybody at this table hated, yeah. hated it. Yeah. So then we Angry. hear that they, you know, this guy is making a new movie. He's got Nicolas Cage in it. That's yeah. the thing this yeah. time. And so I'm like, well, I'm definitely checking this out because I love Beyond the Black Rainbow. I am shocked and surprised that this is the top movie that of Sean. So we don't know how where Holly or Michaela stand on this, right? Uh, but we're saying so our top movie yes. of the year, favorite, favorite. I've movie. seen this movie <laughs> like four table. times. Right. <laughs> I've seen it uh, three times. Okay, <laughs> can't three stop times. watching it. Yes, I've yeah. never seen it. Still, I oh, yeah. am I'm transfixed too triggered by, by this Beyond film. Beyond the Black Rainbow. Yeah, and once have to keep watching it twice at home. Yet. Because to me, it's like, well, this is obviously. <laughs> I bought it before he did. Yeah, because I didn't even know it was out. I'm an idiot. Uh, but I'd seen it twice. I rented it and had to watch it. Okay, right, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe I've seen it five times. Uh, this is the best film experience that I had watching a movie this year. The most fun that I had watching right? a movie because it's like the uh, the filmmaker kind of you in the way. Now, now I'm probably going to describe something. You're going to go like, what? <laughs> but when I watch a Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, you know, it feels like you know Tarantino, especially like the Kill Bills or the the Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's like he knows what's going on in his audience's head when the audience is thinking about it. Like he'll show you something, and characters will say something, and you have a thought in your mind. This is some weird form of like mind reading <laughs> where. Uh, you think, you know, it conjures a thought that's unrelated to the movie or whatever. And then somehow characters in the movie like address it or whatever. Or it's a, he's aware of what you're thinking while you're watching a movie. Tarantino? Get, yeah. Okay. But I, I want to make sure same, that's who we're talking about. I got the same kind of vibe off of uh, Mandy. It's like the guy, he knew. So he knows that I'm watching it saying, what the fuck? No, but the moments that I was like, Oh, I know what this is from. There would be like an answer or something like that. Or there would be like a, he kept on because there's this whole, the movie is a, a, a collection of like obscure heavy metal album covers and uh, uh, obscure science fiction movie uh, references. And, but he's not copying them directly mm. it's like absorbing them and i mean i've heard that the story is that they you know even for beyond the black rainbow that uh, and this is the son of george p cosmatos yes. who uh, also did cobra and uh, yeah. and tombstone and all this yes. um but he would go to the video store and like look at all these covers back in the when you had video stores kids you right, go yeah. and you just saw and the cover the poster you. art painted yes. poster how art. we grew up yeah yeah so you're watching like i mean you look at the death stalker 2 uh, you know, cover. Yeah. It's this painted Frank Frazetta or Boris Vallejo painting. Yes. doesn't feel anything like the movie itself. <laughs> right. Right. But you get, when you're a little kid looking at these artworks, you're imagining that this movie is like some kind of fantastic thing. Mandy is the movie. Is the fantastic you, thing. Uh, yeah. That you imagined off of uh, a yeah. life of looking at these video store covers or uh metal artwork yeah. or, you know, this kind of thing. Um, it's just like, but it also, uh, the Cheddar Goblin is like probably the greatest. I mean, that should be memed forever. Forever the, and ever and thing. ever. You know who made the Cheddar Goblin commercial? Uh, oh, I do. I read it. I don't remember. It's the guys who made Too Many Cooks. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's one of the f- most yeah. fantastic, funny things. And that's the thing, that the, the sense where, of humor right. in this movie. And where it comes in in the movie yeah. is great. Because that's what Beyond the Black Rainbow didn't have. It didn't have a sense of humor. Mandy no, does. it did not. Right. Yeah, Mandy does because even yes. the cult leader, this like you know evil motherfucker who's like, you know, got this ambience and aura to him. Right. You know, 
is revealed. Like I was laughing at this guy's yeah. like you know just overinflated ego. It was oh, you know, yeah, it was fantastic. Yes, the Jeremiah and, Sand and, and he gets brought album. down. Oh yeah, from yeah, that yeah, as well. Yeah. It's great, but that also adds this air of kind of unpredictability to it. The movie feels like an acid trip. Mm. Like you don't need to do drugs so, while you watch this no, because it is, it is the drug. The drug. That's true. It's so <laughs> like when you say he's got an aura and a pulse. Like I can feel it pulsing around him as I'm watching the movie. Yeah. If nothing else, just by the color of what is around him. But that's part of that Panos Cosmetis' style, yeah. I think, is that kind of, uh, it's like an acid trip, kind of yeah. hallucinatory, and psychedelic Everything's trip. red and, the, the, and purple. The first and, hour yeah. of it, maybe more so than anything else, because that f- it, it feels like you're floating through that first hour experiencing all that shit. And then it just, when you get into the part of the trip where you're just like, whoa, yeah. that's the second half of the movie. Yeah. So it's like two different parts of the trip. Yeah. Like you start it's out. It's like two different movies. It's yeah, like oh, you're it on yeah, acid definitely. and you're watching TV and you flip the channel halfway through. Or something, and but then the you characters, are the TV. The characters then, bleed over. Nice. The thing yeah. that I appreciated the best about it was that, um, you know, like usually in the, it's a revenge movie where Nicolas Cage goes on a rip roaring rampage of revenge mm-hmm. that it vul- eventually culminates in him in a, uh, uh, a chainsaw duel uh, in the middle. I mean, like just getting it's if it's wild, it's fantastic. Wow. But the thing that I really uh, uh, hooked on it was that usually in films, this also actually ties in with the ritual. I thought that they did where um, a character experiences a loss early on. Yeah. And usually that's a motivating factor for like why a character goes on revenge. Cause they're, you know, wife, uh, daughter, son, parent, whatever, whole dog. family, whole family, dog, right. Uh, is killed. The dog and, is the most relatable one. Yeah. Let's be real. Uh, that's why John Wick works so well. well that's what, yeah. But it, generally it serves as the inciting incident and yes. is never really brought back into the movie after that. But Mandy's presence uh, continues throughout this movie mm-hmm. in a way that like keeps on grounding like where Cage's character's uh, headspace is at. It's like yeah. I can always relate to him because the movie keeps on going like, well, he to her to him, he's she's this huge part of his psyche yeah and he can't you know see anything past that he is doing this to you know uh um you know settle something within himself i think i think you're uh you're on something though you're with uh the ritual i think you're right though that like with that movie like like rob that was yeah right like rob is the reason that whole movie happens right so like without that cold open with him like but that cold open movie it, they yeah. don't just leave it at that. That it, cold that open back. haunts him. Maybe yeah. that's yeah. it. In the, both these movies, it haunts him. Yeah, it, they're these people to the point are that he like can't by... exist outside of that. Right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he keeps going back to in, that. In yeah. It, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, he, and the way they do it, and in that his really friends cool. are shitty about it too. Like yeah. his yeah. friends keep pushing him back into it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying about. I see the parallels. Yeah, there's a, there, yeah. but you haven't seen Mandy no, yet. No, but like I, but but you're speaking a language that I can understand. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. And uh, damn it, was there another point I was going to make? I mean, there's many. Points. I think there was, but maybe I'll, it'll occur to me when Sean talks about his this favorite is, movie. I'm, this the, is going to be. This is our together. Well, I've because been talking. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Like, so take it away, Mandy. Best uh, experience of the year. It really was. I went and saw this at the the music box in Chicago with a. It was a, in their smaller theater, so it was a very small group of like twenty people. Um, but it was a whole like it, I was transfixed from start to finish in this movie. Um, and like we said before, considering how I felt about his previous efforts. Um, and again, maybe I need to watch that movie again. I don't know. I don't feel the need to watch that movie again. Neither do I. Um, and you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm good. And I can't say it's maybe it's because it does have Nicolas Cage in it. Maybe that's the thing that keeps me sticking oh, with it. Oh God, with the bathroom scene. The bathroom. Well, the bathroom scene is like it's. Oh, how, how do you feel about that scene? Because it's like it, it's his most like desperate scene yeah. in the movie. But it's the most. He's cage. breaking down. I mean, I mean, this is a movie where he goes full cage he does yeah cage, which we, you've cage, always yeah. wanted to see full the rage, rage cage, cage yeah but and there's a scene in it which in it, other yeah. any any other movie see that's the thing like nicholas cage goes so far like over the fucking top uh, in a lot of uh, right. movies where you laugh about it you laugh yeah i didn't laugh in this but the performance that he's giving 
is, is like, like the same. at 11, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it's I in tone like with the movie. I feel like he gives that to every movie. Directors just don't know how to use it. I think it's used well I in this like one. I feel like he comes yeah. to every movie giving it an 11. This is the movie that matches um, Nicolas Cage. That's, that's <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. I feel like he just have it. Yeah, I feel like he just doesn't. I mean, because he'll take any project because he needs the money. But like, I feel like so most of the time, I don't think he ever phones it in. I think he's always giving oh, it yeah, eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The directors just don't know what to do with him. I think well, they figure yeah. out they how can't to... direct him, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like bring it down here, Nick. Go yeah. up here. No, Nick. I yeah. think they figure out how to like they have a movie in which this fits. Yeah, like the the that scene, and it's a it's a fantastic because it's it's filmed like somebody said it's filmed like a Wes Anderson movie where it feels like what? there's like. Whoa, whoa, like a Wes Anderson scene? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that scene. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just the, that scene. The, the three it's like wall a, right, set. Right, it's a three yeah, wall okay, set. It yeah, feels yeah. like you're, you are in a three wall set, mm-hmm. and the camera's just right on the outskirts of it, and your character's interacting within it. Just that scene. And he's kind of going nuts within that scene. And like I when someone says I'm like, Alright, I understand what they're saying with that. Um, but it's like it's wild and it's out of this world. And you know, you go from that that I think sets up like his persistence as to where he's going through the rest of the movie. Um but it's it's I mean it's it's a hell of a performance from Cage. Um and it's uh, it, it it is from front to back, like we said, it's a fucking trip in this movie. Um, the music also. Can we talk about oh, the, the yeah, music yeah, of this yeah, movie? Yeah. Yeah. The music of this movie um, and uh, the inter- interstitial titles too. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. they're like the the they're glittering versions yes. of novels, like yes. fantasy novels, and eventually like black metal albums. Yes. And yeah, I think Colin has more of appreciation for that because I think he, he he listened to more of that and grew up with that more than I did. Uh, well, black metal is more of like a newer thing. All sure, that kind yeah. of thorny, you right? Know, yes, yeah. But um, uh, yeah, but they do that, and um, also like the the biker the biker guys, the biker demons. I'm going to call them, and despite how they're portrayed as like actual. That was People. the moment that I was in. Yeah, I wish they weren't. I, guess I wish they weren't either, better, but yeah. when they called them and oh, yeah. they With showed the horn up. of a Braxis. Yes, yeah. I was like, fucking, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, because when, also the when they showed up, ever. like, there was a... Uh, 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 expectation when they were being called, but it was for me. Yeah. It was met when they showed up. I'm mm-hmm. like, these guys are fucking cool. I'm fucking disturbed by them. Yeah, I yeah. want them to be bad guys because they're fucking crazy to yeah. me, and like they scare me. Like just their look, their fucking voices. Like I'm all in for them. Yeah. Um, as bad guys, like they were great. Where he goes is great. Ah, it's this movie, fucking- uh, it's like okay. So here's like a there's a there's a subgenre of horror and science fiction that's currently going on right now mm. and i like to call it maybe if 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 i'm right you'll know what i'm talking about but the tonal horror movie right where no. the plot if you were to actually write this thing out as a as a story would take you like 20 pages but a director is able to hit like it's all about like the tone yeah. the atmosphere the ambiance the the imagery the soundtrack and you know it, so it slows the pace down and the thing runs at least feature length. And what I like about these type of movies is they give you the audience time to, because you're not like uh, following fast edits right. and, you know, uh, geography and choreography. Yes. It, uh, you sit there and you kind of, the experience is enhanced because you're having um, thoughts of your own. Right. You get to sit in it and experience it and think about, you get to think about, What's yeah. happening? It's not going by so quick where you're just like, what, that, 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 that. Yeah. You get to sit in there. You get to kind of stew in what's going on in front of you and in the movie. Yeah. Yes. And I really like that. And I that's do. where I said, I think that this guy is like, he knows, like, it, you know, he knows the, where these imagery, imagery that he's producing uh, takes his audience. Yes. And he's like feeding off of it. So it's like a feedback loop yes. between you and the movie. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And the soundtrack by what, Johan Johansson? Yeah, his, his, la- his I, last is that his last one. Yeah, it's his last soundtrack before he. If you don't know who this away. guy is, Whew. right? He did. Uh, did he do Arrival? I th- he did. I think he Sicario. did Arrival. He did definitely did Sicario. Mm-hmm. And he, may have he done Arrival. did. Uh, oh God! But he's yeah. also done like music outside yeah. of his scoring and everything. Like he's great. Arrival. Yeah. 
But the music, but the music though, it's like the I also don't like that. Movie. Yeah. No, I do like it. That, that's the I do like Arrival. Oh, it just that. that movie destroyed me. But this guy, he died young. I think he uh, did. Yeah. Yeah. He died last year, so I think Mandy is his last. I think uh, so. It was like posthumous. Uh, really uh, work, uh, yeah, which is unfortunate, but yeah, I'm very unfortunate. But it's a great yeah. soundtrack. Um, it's a uh, to me a great movie. Um, it's again surprising considering, but I was with this movie from start to finish. Um, yeah, Mandy, Mandy, what a fucking ride, man. Just the <laughs> fucking colors, if nothing else, just like woo. <laughs> That's a fucking movie. Yeah, Mandy, my number one of the year. That's an experience. <laughs> Holly, what did you experience this year? Uh, now I'm afraid that it's going to be, we may hear Mandy's name again sometime on this podcast. I but think so. what was your number one movie of My the year? number one movie was a slightly different tone than Mandy. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> a little friendlier, if you will. <laughs> um, friendly. We already talked about it. Documentary "Won't You Be My Neighbor" oh, was it's my great. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> it made Definitely. me feel things. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw it three times <laughs> in the theater. Mm-hmm. I because I kept taking people. I saw it and I was like, "You As have you to." See. Yeah, I felt a little guilty seeing it before you because I knew you would like care more about it than I would. <laughs> but like, like I said, I didn't have a choice. It was like the only movie right. I could go see, and like I had to go You're see it at Alamo like, Draft I have House. To see this? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, pretty much. Because like, because like Forgive I have like I need to an experience in an Alamo Draft House. This is my only opportunity yeah. to do yeah. it. Yeah. I was very jealous that you got to see it before me. Yeah. Um, but I think I saw it like the next weekend, so it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I have to say, like, I cried the entire time. <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't expect the emotional response that I had as soon as that Mr. Rogers Neighborhood music started playing at the very beginning. Were you waiting for the I other shoe to drop? Were you worried something I was, bad was going to happen? Absolutely. Yeah, You're always yeah, worried. Yeah, absolutely. Documentaries, like that, yeah. D- documentaries put that in yes. you. Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, Were you relieved that it didn't, like... I can't express how relieved that was. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, truly, I as soon as as soon as yeah, I heard the music, I started crying. Mr. Rogers was a weekend alcoholic. No, like, well, like whoosh, smacking people. Like it's not really a spoiler, but I feel like the worst thing you learn is that like one of the like like characters on the show was like mm-hmm. a gay man, and M- M- Mr. Rogers basically said like you cannot be public about it because like mm. this whole show will shut down. Right. Yeah, but he didn't say but, like no, he didn't was, say like. Like this is fucked up. You can't do that. He basically yeah. it was just like, right. listen, this is I, where yeah. we're at unfortunately now you can't. Time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you can't. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. The, and like they talked to the guy about it, and he was like, that guy was my best friend in my entire yeah. life. And like the way he speaks about Fred Rogers is yeah. incredible. And and, so. and Fred Rogers' wife was even you mm-hmm. know they they asked her they're like, now you and Fred had lots of uh, homosexual friends, right? And she's like, oh, we had tons. She's like, it wasn't it wasn't about that. It wasn't that he didn't approve of uh, of that lifestyle it was that he knew that it wasn't possible the culture had not caught up yet yeah exactly being a kids show on PBS mm. in the 60s mm-hmm. in the 70s it literally it literally could not it, 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 that couldn't be public knowledge it I, couldn't be the, when, I'm sorry I'm sorry to constantly hijack you but no, like, you're fine you're fine when, when I like I said I saw it with a very like expressive audience mm-hmm. and it was a full theater um, mm-hmm. when the first scene of the movie was that they put up a border wall around the Amazing. castle everyone in the theater fucking lost it because like yeah. that was 50 some years ago yep. and time is a flat circle and we're right back here yep. again like it, the, the prescience of this documentary floored right. the audience I watched it yes with. and uh, you know we Everyone had that emotional connection, you know, you, in this make-believe world, they put up a wall because they they didn't want certain people. And and we all make that an instant like, current mo- emotional connection. You know, everyone's like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. And then we find out that that was the first episode of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Jesus, I had no idea that mm-hmm. Mr. Rogers was so edgy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so it's so crazy that the stuff that that he covered on that show he i mean he covered things like dramatic and intense and emotional and grown up topics when that- he washes his feet in the bathtub with oh the God. black mailman yeah. that was like a huge moment huge. it was it was during it was yeah. during the whole swimming pool incident mm-hmm. when yeah. pouring acid in the pool that yeah. was when like yeah. i felt the most uncomfortable sitting next to the person i was sitting next yeah. to was when they were throwing bleach in the yeah. swimming yeah. pool like, with sorry, black I'm women sorry, swimming I'm in it sorry. yeah i was like oh yeah i yeah. watching it watching when they showed that old footage of them throwing the acid in the pool mm-hmm. like it made me cry harder mm-hmm. 
And it just, it made me appreciate so much more what we were watching. Like he was just the purest man. And obviously like it's, we all know that I'm, I love Mr. Rogers. I think he was just, do you? I do. I, I, <laughs> oh God, I do. I think we're he was just wonderful. A little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> and watching this, it was just so reaffirming that like there was someone so wonderful out there and that can keep happening. You know, it was just so hopeful. And this time, especially specifically this time that we're living in, we all needed to hear that. That's why I think why I loved this documentary so much is we all needed it. Mm. We need to see the good in the world. We need to see that there can be people that will love unconditionally. We continue to need it. Can we make one of these every year? Can yeah. we do, that's what we're we saying. Can, yeah. can we, we can it. we do, can we do Bob Ross? Can we do Bill Nye? <laughs> Bill Nye yeah. Can we, love, we do all of yeah, them? We we'll love all people. Of them. Yeah. Let's get a Steve Irwin in there. Let's yeah. do all of Something. them. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's just we needed this so God, much. Steve Let's do our research really to make sad. sure there's no yeah. like trap doors we're gonna fall right. in. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure none like, of these people like were yeah. said, I, secret racist. I or anything. think I enjoyed it so much because I was constantly like, we were all here. waiting. For my it. my life's yeah. gonna get crushed right now. Right. Like, like, oh, constantly. the credits are rolling. Yeah. We're yeah. fine. We're yeah. safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you know one thing, what I what I really loved about it is how this how it was constructed. Like they take you from start to finish, but it, it's all guided through a wonderful animation transition and it's it's oh, just the, i forgot about yes the it's gorgeous. gorgeous it's so gorgeous and kind you know. of sad it's like, very sad because you know it's this it's they use daniel tiger this very familiar yes. character that's still beloved that's still today but that, yes. that's like when they said that that was the proxy for how fred yep. rogers felt most comfortable speaking to the world i was like yes. don't tell me that holy yeah. shit don't tell me that's he, so sad yeah like, the emotions that he couldn't express the way he wanted to, he would do it through a, through his puppets. His puppets were expressions of him, mm-hmm. and it was just so unbelievably beautiful to realize that, like this this show that I grew up with that shaped a lot of who I became. And it, there was there's so much behind it. It wasn't just you know we watched a lot of stupid shit when we were kids. A lot oh, of stupid that shit. Super cut in the documentary where they're showing all the Ren and Stimpy. Yes. Stuff back to back. I was like, wow, you're making me feel really bad. Yes. About the stuff I watched. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I watched a lot of Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Oh, we all did. Well, but like they they're cutting great. that. They're yeah. cutting that with Fred Rogers talking about how like dumb children's entertainment yeah. is. Sure, and yeah. while he's saying that, they're cutting together like literally the dumbest clips from like animation mm-hmm. in the, the of the nineties. <laughs> everything yeah. I ever yeah. watched. And, and, Exactly. It kind of like forces you to like self reflect in a moment. And be it's like, true. Oh, yeah. Fuck. He's and then right. It's and true. And go grab my kid and be like, to watch this. Yeah. Shit. Mm-hmm. Like just watch this. And, for and an in hour. that moment, I just I kept thinking, I'm like, thank God that I watched Mr. Rogers mm-hmm. because there are principles that I know that I still use in my in my adult life. I can't tell you how many times people piss me off, and I I I, I want to react, and then I think, you know what? What would Mr. Rogers do? Mm-hmm. I honestly think that. And I and I know people that have admitted to that too. They think that too. And I think it's just I, I love that this wonderful person was brought to light at this time. You know, there's there's so much that we didn't realize we were being taught so many lessons that that I don't we didn't know back then that we were that we needed them. And now we look back like, wow, thank God that we learned these things as kids. And it was just such an important show and i mean not to mention like there's a whole section of the documentary where it talks about how he saved pbs he yeah. went before the you well, know before congress which is a and great, was like, yes it's just it's you a can great find moment. it on youtube so it's, it's spectacular yeah. it's great i had yeah. seen it before and i'm moment. just like oh it's perfect so when he when he says mr rogers you you just saved pbs basically yeah. like it's yeah. it's just yeah, wonderful mm-hmm. i i loved it so much and i think everyone should watch i think everyone needs that kind of hope right now and i I, I loved it. I think it's, I think it's going to win best documentary this year. I, I pretty it's, sure. Yeah, it's pretty sure. It's pretty. Uh, I mean, it's. I think another one's got it. It's hard to find the fault in this movie. You know exactly. It's, you know, we like we said, we were waiting for that other shoe to drop, and it never did. And yeah, it's just at the end you see all these people that they're interviewing that knew him. And I love they the, just, the, I they love have the interviews yeah. with all the people who worked on the show. The audience, yes. the audience the participation parts. at the very end yes. fucking got me. Though. It's like it's so it's so touching. Yeah. I, I literally cried this entire movie. That last five minutes, though, where it's like now you like Mr. Rogers. Yeah. I was asked this. Of Take you. a now minute. Go ahead yeah. and do this right now. And then it is literally like five minutes of silence. I'm, yeah. I, and they're mm. cutting to all the people that are doing that exact same thing. And they're talking head. It's and so beautiful. My whole theater could not handle it. At yeah. That time. 
No, it's it's the therapy we all need. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm living through a thing right now. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, no, when I saw it, I was like, well, when we do our best of episode, <laughs> I guarantee this is going to be it. And nothing else has stopped it. This was definitely my number one. Hands down. Won't you be my neighbor? That's it. Michaela. All right. What's your number one? My number one, we've talked about a little bit already, but my number one is A Quiet Place. Ah. I, uh, I, like, at the point in time that I saw this movie in the theaters, I had not seen a movie in theaters in like three or four months, maybe. Um, over the winter, there was just nothing uh, good enough to get me out of my house to go yeah. to the theater. Uh, April came around, you asked me to go, and I was like, yep. <laughs> Usually you are the one who gets me out of my house to go. Yeah. And uh, we went, and I was like, like I said, I was like up in my seat, like I'm pretty sure ushers are going to yell at me if they come in and see me like freaking out like this, because I was not expecting a 90 minute panic attack. Yeah. Holy shit. It. Like from the like, like I thought the cold open would be quiet, and then we transition into like oh yeah eight months later, and we've learned how to like live with sound. No, it's like six months later, and we still have to be sign languagey and quiet. And and I understand that some people have problems with like the logic of this movie, and I don't actually. I really don't have logic problems with this uh, movie. Yeah, no, a lot of the world where you have to do this. Yeah, a well, lot of a lot of people are really piss- or monsters. they're they're pissy that we don't get that backstory and. Uh, a lot of people, I don't think we need it. A lot of people are like, well, don't have kids. And I was like, birth control is going to run out eventually. Yeah. If no one's stocking the family. You can't have sex. Still, don't have sex. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. You have to repopulate the species. You know, I mean, it may not be the wisest thing to do. Right. right. But there's got to be like, that's, that, I think that's I, part, I, of, the, see, yeah. I, part see, of the hope I, of the species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but yeah. I never got the vibe that they meant to get pregnant. Yeah. I felt like that and was There's also that. It's like, maybe they didn't. That's, yeah. I never uh, felt like they meant to get pregnant. I felt like it was an accident. Right. There's also how I always felt. Just like it. you, even at a certain point, like maybe they know they shouldn't, but one thing leads to another. Yeah, yeah. this happens to happen. It's an yeah, I, I like, felt like I feel. Gonna, I feel like happen. the nitpicky problems like that that people have with this movie are not important. Like I just really think that right. if you're gonna be like, well, they shouldn't have had a baby. Well, I, yeah. I, my, my read of it was always they never meant to. It just happened. Like, like we see them in the very opening scene right. of this movie go into the pharmacy to get medication. That shit's gonna run out of birth control eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously you know? they know like, a baby is going to cry a lot. Exactly, they and prepared they for built it. The yeah, room and yeah, yeah exactly. Like, like, yeah. like I, but is I, it a contrivance because you have a, a movie where the monsters hunt by sound and, they and you were eventually, the baby. yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. Right. I'm not saying it's a contrivance, but like, if I was going to make a movie that's a dynamite fucking thriller, yeah, that's that's element, where yeah. I'm going. That's an well, element you yeah. have to put in there. The, the thing I love about her being pregnant is it's like a countdown to when they all die. Yeah, it's yeah. a time bomb. Right? It is yeah. a time bomb. Yeah. of like, and especially that scene where she's like counting, like crossing it off in the calendar. I was like, this is not a good feeling for them. This no. is like we're gonna die right. the day this baby's and that's born. Smart. Yeah. Storytelling yeah, and, and automatically builds an attention. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, to me, people that criticize, like, well, you shouldn't have had a kid. I'm like, you're missing the whole point of this movie. Yeah. Holy shit, you're missing the whole point. Yeah. Uh, just like, just go along for the ride. And like, I feel like I've seen a lot other of other movies with more logical fallacies than this one. I feel like this one. I wouldn't say it's airtight, but I would say it's it covers a lot of its bases. Um, I, I saw some people I know were like, well, who grew the corn? Blah blah blah. How they plant the corn? Uh, Amish people exist. They plant corn yeah. without machinery all the time. Yeah, like they're like like those they're, things they're are not farmers. Important. They know how to do this shit. This yeah. is their property. They're not squatting. Yeah. They lived here. They 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 lived a life before this happened, and they're they are managing the best they can after. Yeah, and um, the tension um ratcheted up at times that. I didn't expect it to, and then it would like continuously keep going. Like I said, Emily Blunt on the stairs was mm-hmm. a scene that I, ugh, I can't, I can't, like I just can't. <laughs> like with that scene, it kills me. And um, the, I mean, her in the bathtub was like secondary because, like I said, I still wasn't over the stairs scene at that point. But uh, John Krasinski, like I, I, I love that we're in this time of people not in horror moving into horror and Mm -hmm. being really good at it. Like, Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that will entice more people to move into horror that maybe would not have thought of it. That's the thing. I think everybody should move into horror. Well, I I agree. I agree. But we have to, we have to, (laughs) I agree, but we have to entice them over. Well, this will do it. Yeah. That's Jordan Peele and John Krasinski. Yeah. success that they're seeing those guys. They're going to bring this new audience. you know, any day now we're going to get a trailer for us by Jordan Peele and everyone else is already super excited for that so hopefully like I think there is a trailer also, 
Twilight Link uh, comes out at Christmas this, Day. Yeah, oh, at, that's right. At this but, yeah. point, uh, the listeners are listening to it. There's probably yeah, that's right. You've yep. seen it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but Stephen King once said, and I've always remembered this, is he said that usually, like you know, people come up to him and say that's a horrifying story. I'm totally that's disgusting. This is horrifying. Where'd you ever come up with this idea? And he says, actually, most of the ideas that come to him, he's like, wouldn't it be funny if? <laughs> I love that. You know, it's I like, love so that. It all starts off as like this would be kind of you know, yeah. it'd cool. be funny. I can so, see, but that you idea, know, that now that comedy you say and that, horror, it yeah, makes if sense. trucks came to life and stuff. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. But when you see it, it's horrifying. <laughs> if, but if, the if, idea is like, if it would be funny if trucks yeah. came to life. Yeah. If when you went to take a shit in a toilet, the toilet fought it's back sh- and yeah. fucking dream catcher. Yeah, yeah shit yeah. weasels. Yeah. yeah, shit weasels and dream there's, catcher. Yeah, there's some you know what? Now that you say that, all of his stories make sense. Yeah, there's there's a very fine line between comedy and horror. Yeah, yeah. People just don't realize it. But that's why the comedians were saying, yeah, you know, it's like, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yet, yeah, like we talked about earlier, this is the one of the few times that a husband and wife team works really well. I found like their chemistry obviously is very real and very dynamic. And I, uh, I mean, I fell in love with Emily Blunt and Looper when she like gives that monologue about how she like mm-hmm. abandoned her kid. I was like, yeah. I am all in on this woman, and like yeah. I could, I will watch anything she ever does. And I just don't feel like she's taken off in the way I want her to. Like I just want her to be. The biggest star, and she isn't yet. I'm hope. I mean, maybe at the time you're listening to us, Mary Poppins has done it. Yeah. Maybe, but um, that's her big movie. Beyond that, she's got to be like a Marvel superhero. Yeah, she should have been, uh, been Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. She should have been Captain Marvel. Well, we haven't seen Brie Larson yet. Maybe yeah. she should be. I've Captain. seen Brie Larson but enough. <laughs> maybe you haven't seen her Captain Marvel. Yeah. A revelation. Yeah. I don't know. I um, love Marvel, but in the trailer, yeah. I'm bored with her. But yes, my number one is A Quiet Place. Uh, I, I mean, if you haven't seen it, are you under a watch rock it. at this point? You gotta fucking watch it. It's yeah, incredible. I mean, if you hadn't seen it in a theater, you're really missing out. Yeah, the theater's that's the, the only theater thing that's, yeah. Place, yeah. that's the yeah. most pure experience of yeah. it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Colin. That was, was a it. community thing yeah. that maybe you missed. Yeah, but if you're watching at home, lights off, no distractions, yeah. just get into uh, it. Yeah, no distractions. In your basement theater. Yeah. Sound bars on. Mm-hmm. All right, so about the worst movie of the year. First of all, I have a beast. A beast? A beef? A beast? I have a beef, you have a beef with Netflix. You have a beast with Netflix. Netflix uh, has a, a business model where basically, even though we were saying that The Ballad of Buster Scruggs might be one of the best movies of the year. Definitely. Uh, it's only promoted by the service for about a week, and then the next week they move on to promoting something else. Right. Yeah. It's definitely that a window. Sucks yeah. because good movies are getting lost. It's like an day. avocado. It's good for a day. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good for about three yeah. hours. <laughs> you buy it and you'll be like, oh, this will be ripe just in time, and it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's, you miss the this, window. It was just like a good model for movies. The I just avocado don't model. It's all about yeah. quantity. It is. Quantity, yeah. Colin. And we got you covered. If you like quantity. romance, we one week there's a romance movie. You like comedy, next week Some there's a comedy movie. I don't, movie. Very like, good, I don't feel like, a lot of it. I don't feel like that's even the model. I feel like this is our new content, whether you like it or not, is the Netflix model. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah every week. Whether so, it's appropriate for you or not, here's so you, our new content. You may have seen a promo for uh, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Do like, you like westerns? You might yeah. also like The Christmas Prince. And then, yeah, we, <laughs> then we moved on. But you, we're saying, on this show, you should go back and watch The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Um... <laughs> Also, what was my second point about uh, Netflix? Oh, that they hold movies hostage. Yeah, they do. That uh, movies that should be seen by a wider audience are never made available on streaming or on physical media right. because Netflix holds them hostage. And number three, because they're the dumping ground for like a lot of studios' crappy movies where basically stuff shows up as Netflix originals that was made uh, to actually be like a theatrical movie. Yeah. And the, the studio goes like, we can't like make any money off of this thing we're gonna dump it to netflix Netflix, yeah and this is where my worst movie of the year comes from i think i got it all right let's you're gonna guess yeah i'm gonna guess let's do the three two one thing again okay all right right, here we go on three after three two one three two one go all right three three two two, one Cloverfield, Cloverfield Paradox. Paradox. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You are absolutely correct, That's sir. That is the worst movie of the year. You Good know guess, why? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, because... Uh, why the, so, Colin? Well, Which, I mean, I, I have some, yeah, some feelings about that movie. Uh, it was a movie that, I mean, the, the entire uh, first... The, the Cloverfield franchise I am a fan of. I like yeah. the fact that... Uh, I, I mean, I, I genuinely like those first two movies. But I also like the um, the crazy 
uh, promotional campaigns that they came up for with for them, which was the first one. We're going to show you a trailer, and it's just going to have a date, no title, nobody knows what the fuck it is. Boom, and then it came out, Statue you know, within like two months, yeah. you know. And then the second one, which I think was retrofitted to be a Cloverfield movie, yes. uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane was originally the seller, and or yeah, or like Valencia, it was like Valencia. Yeah, I think, Valencia and I was think the because import. I think like the actual the actors said that they didn't know they were in a Cloverfield yes. movie because it was basically made into to connect into that mythology after the fact, right? Um, and then this third one was called the the God particle which yes. i think is how it was uh filmed and then uh released on netflix and like this big uh to do on the super bowl of 2017 where basically you're watching the super bowl and all of a sudden there was a commercial for a new cloverfield movie and guess what you don't even have to wait two weeks or two months or anything it's on tonight, tonight. after the super bowl genius it's a genius, genius bit of marketing because it gets it it creates this uh hysteria for the pro you know you're like what, Wait, what i gotta huh? tune into this you know i mean the the nielsen rating said it didn't beat uh, the what it was this is us which aired at the same time right, but you yeah. know still it, i'm sure it was it paramount made their money back well, on this movie jack was gonna die i was so. gonna say that this it's, is us episode that, that night was, was the, a pivotal yeah, 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 so, and it had so, been promoted so. in advance yeah. and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. yeah he but, died on super bowl sunday and they air it on super bowl sunday yeah, yeah. i well, mean I come read on. paramount come on. spent That's 40 million on this movie yeah. netflix bought it for 50 and so Paramount made their money back before a single person had clicked on the stream to watch it. Wow, Paramount came 50, out on top, yeah, huh? Yeah, on million? a movie that they Jesus. sat there and said, we don't think that people are going to watch this movie. Why? Because it sucks. It doesn't make a goddamn bit of sense. I mean, like, just structurally, the character, like, nothing makes sense about this movie. Mm. It, uh, Let's advertise it as the next Well, it, the advertising campaign is disingenuous because it said basically that it was going to provide uh, answers to the Cloverfield universe and somehow tie mm -hmm. it all together. Uh -huh. The movie takes place on a, on a space station, which is a particle accelerator where they, you know, create this wormhole that there's dimensions that somehow we're supposed to believe now whatever that words. they did created the Cloverfield monster brought it in and it's like huh what this is the lamest explanation that you could possibly come up with for why the original Cloverfield movies happened uh and the characters I mean it was just it was a clusterfuck the movie was a yeah. clusterfuck and I hated it and uh, I also felt, you know, but part of that could have been because I was sucked in by the P.T. Barnum kind of, yeah. uh, you know, this is a, a fantastic. Oh, look at how awesome this thing is. And then you go see it yeah. and it's the bearded lady or it's the fish. What was the the, the food? Fiji mermaid. Yeah. We took the monkey and he took a fish and he stabled them together. Fiji mermaid. <laughs> Like they, did, like they did to Rain Wilson in uh, yeah, 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 that's that was right. Yeah. Fish Boy. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly it. There you go. So, so this uh, movie's like Fish Boy. Yeah, gotcha. promises the goods, that sounds way cooler delivers than you is. a monkey stapled together with yeah, a fish. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a monkey stapled to something. Worst movie. If you haven't seen it, don't see it. If uh, and you're a lucky, lucky person. The rest Whoa, of us be cautious of the next Cloverfield movie because God knows what that. I don't think they, I think they're planning on making. Maybe more. we should just yeah. stop. Maybe, Maybe you're just Probably, not. Yeah, yeah. Now they're just trying to explain more shit, and they're just like, "You didn't need to," and I was interested well, in the because, first but thing. But now, you did. if you if you take these ones as part of the canon, uh, I don't know where you I go. From the, you fuck it up. Yeah, they've already yeah. they've made a course correct a, a course change that blows the mythology up and sucks, mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's ruined. Uh, but I do like Cloverfield and Ten Cloverfield Lane. Indeed, Cloverfield Paradox, worst movie of twenty seventeen. There it is. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. God damn it! You're so it was uh, Super Bowl twenty eighteen. Super, yeah. Super Bowl happens this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Next year. Yep. I'm stopping talking. You always talking. cross this into next year. Colin, no. thank you for Sports Corner. <laughs> we appreciate it. Colin Sports Corner. Colin Sports Corner knows what he's talking about. Is it me? Yeah, <laughs> I was not. John, you're next. Um, 
I'm not going to do a worst of. I'm going to do a, a disappointing okay. of 2018. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I know what it is. I Three, feel like two, I know one. what it is, too. Three, two, one. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Isn't that predictable? Probably. Uh, Shouldn't yeah. you just tell them to go listen to our Halloween I'm, episode? I mean, I'm, pretty, yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure I called this mm. before when you guys were all hyped up about Halloween, how much you were looking forward to it. Sure. I think I said to Colin, you know it's going to be Sean's most disappointing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I was willing to take that chance um it's and it's weird it's disappointing but it's also like i'm gonna watch that movie again because i need to like because you have abusive to, relationships I do. with movies I that's need, why I, the whole series yeah I'm just, no it's just movies in general see I mean, our episode on possession for more yeah. no. can we not talk about possession for one episode please <laughs> talk about how much he hates like it and it, it says Michaela. people should watch it that is an abusive uh, yeah. All right. movie but, but Halloween but yeah um, I mean we did a whole podcast on this but yeah just it was I was disappointed um, I, I think I only have myself to blame I probably in this because I'm pretty sure they did Colin warned you I, there yeah. Colin warned there was yeah. a, you and I they both. They didn't really lie to me in what was happening no. with the trailers and everything. I'm sure there's maybe a scene Colin or tried two to that, protect you. Well, he tried. <laughs> I know. He I tried us, to cushion the blow. Colin yeah. sat us both down it. for a talk, being like, "Kids, you're going to be disappointed." Yeah, yeah. 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 he gave uh, me the dad talk. I went, yeah. I went in with low expectations, yeah. and they still weren't even met. Yeah. I can't imagine the the, <laughs> the, the, the elevator blow. of yeah of disappointment that you fell through. On this um, movie. I mean, I'll never not like this. Will if they make another Halloween movie, it'll happen again. You'll still go see it though. I'll still, I'll go, still go see it. I'll still be hyped about it because that's because you never learn. That's how I am with the series. Yeah, I'll but the, to be fair, the track record of the series is like, man, eh, some of them are good. And some of them are bad. So you right. suffer through the bad ones. I feel like yeah. the math would work out though, like Star Wars math, where most of them are bad. Yep. Oh, and so well, that's a all right. Let's stop bashing the Halloween series. We're only here. We're, I'm, no, I'm we're just saying. Only, we're I'm saying. Talk about one Halloween movie, and let's not. You know, we won't get into the other ones because yeah, we have we've love talked, and affinity for. We've talked about movies. Halloween at length. Yeah, no. and nauseam. I think at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was disappointing to me again. I want to watch it. <laughs> it's weird. I I, I, I want to watch it again. How many um, times have you seen it? Uh, I only saw it twice. I saw it back to back. Only before. saw it twice. Jesus I've seen it three Christ. times. Jesus Christ! Why need and I'll watch it more because I even watched. I, I mean, I liked it. That's why I saw it three times because right. well, I yeah, liked that's it. Very true. Um, well, that makes but, sense. But yeah. there's again, there's elements of it that I really like. There's elements of it that I think are completely horrible. Um, but it's a it's a Halloween movie, and I can't help it. It's my fucking weak spot in movies, and I it, you know, Michael Myers walking around killing people. Ah, oh, God, I'm a fucking glutton for punishment with this series. I can't. I don't know. Everything I feel is probably wrong with these, but I'll watch it again. Um, fuck me, I'm gonna buy it when it comes out because that's. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Blumhouse is having the last laugh, man. They really well, are. I get it. As a completionist and yeah. as a collector, you're I've, like, I have all the other Halloween all movies. I have the collection. my collection won't be complete. I have the I other don't. worst ones. Yeah, I do. I, I only own the, the ones I like. Oh, I that's have the worst of the only worst. Ones all of them on top notch Blu ray. So I will definitely. I have them all, Michaela. I own but one, I got them in a I, set. I own one, I two, and four. I've, and I've that's got it. the set. Do. I've got yeah. the deluxe set. Yeah. And so now to not have, have the next going. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, you have the set that is now obsolete right. because now there's another movie that doesn't fit into your box set. That's fine. I'll just add to the right of it. <laughs> you don't have to, going. though. Yeah. You can say. He I'm does, just, he's saying he does, but though. I'm saying, but this is, I'm giving you an out. You can actually say it ends with these are the ones I like. These are the formative Halloween movies. I don't movies. understand what you're saying. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Sean doesn't operate to. on that level, though. Understand. That's the thing. Okay. Well, then, so you're saying don't? <laughs> this movie? Don't. The Colin doesn't do that either. Don't listen to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah very true, you you're, fucking you're, hypocrite. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're so right out about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was disappointing to me. Um, but again, it's a Halloween movie, so there's elements of it that I still do like. So, ah! They got me. They got me hook, line, and sinker for this series, so what can you do about it? But yeah, that was the most disappointing movie for me this year. That didn't sound like a bad review. No, not no, really. It's not, it well, it's not. It sounded very waffly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's how I feel about the movie. I'm very waffly on that movie. So, But there's nothing else, I don't think, this year, aside from, like you said, Cloverfield Paradox, where you're just like, fuck this in a The Meg? You really hated the Meg, when we but saw I that. went into that going like I'm not gonna like this movie. Yeah. I didn't want I didn't want to watch that movie. Yeah. I was forced to. 
Yeah, you were. Yeah. Rightfully yeah. so. That's I'll the whole say. point of the show is being forcing people like to watch that. movies. That's yeah. fine. But yeah. I knew from the beginning, I'm like, this does not look interesting at all. It's just going to be bad. Mm -hmm. um, and there it was. So mm -hmm. I can't I can't be disappointed by something I thought was just going to be bad right off the bat. So there's that. Uh, nothing else, like we said, uh, in a series of movies that I have really liked so far, Cloverfield Paradox was fucking just horrible um but other than that there's nothing that i saw this year that was just like oh i'm curious and i don't want to take anybody's thunder but has anybody seen the predator you i mean both of you sean and Colin, yeah, you guys both saw it, it. We, but i'm like, seeing the think pieces now about in defense of the predator oh, of course those are i was starting less disappointed already. by that but disgusting you're seeing him from johnny Squires, who's oh. yeah. yeah johnny yeah he's yeah he's he can't be forgiving. trusted yeah so. no can't be um, trusted he's very forgiving of certain things and but like, no. i remember before the movie came out holly and i both thought that looked terrible mm. and you guys both gave it a chance and yeah, both right. hated like, it to the point you guys you guys kept ranting about how much you hated it mm -hmm. the yeah, day after you saw it mm -hmm. which like I mean was entertaining to listen to because sure. I'm never gonna go see it <laughs> sure. but like Holly and I both had the foresight to be like that movie looks fucking like, terrible fuck yeah. that yeah. Predator yeah. would be the runner up yeah. disappointing I'm like come on it's a fucking Predator movie it's I, not I'm hard it's up. not yeah. hard to do Especially, like a Predator yeah. like, movie is easy to make why but, do you keep and, fucking but, it up but we do have to keep in mind that we all went with our we all have a different type of worst, and Sean went with disappointing. Yeah, that's true. We do that's all the different true. degrees of worst. Yeah, he yeah. went with disappointing. Yeah, right. That was yeah. the one. Halloween was the movie that broke his heart. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. He has, he saw worse movies, but you he went with disappointing. Yeah. You didn't have yeah. to do much, and you had yeah. me in yeah. my heart. And you didn't <laughs> yeah, quite. That's get true. There. We all define uh, that position differently. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Holly, what was your worst you slash Holly, disappointing? Let's, let's you talk about bad movies. Yeah. No, so shit. you've seen a lot this year, huh? I have seen a shit ton of bad movies. I could have done a top five, a top ten of bad movies. That one movie didn't come out this year, did it? Um, the which one? The City of Z or whatever it was. The that, Lost that was City. Last year. There's the one movie Z? where you went and saw and you were just like, Fuck, oh, oh, movie. the, the, yeah, The Lost City of Z. Yeah. With, that was like last year, though. With uh, Charlie Hunnan and Tom Holland. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was last year. <laughs> that was last year. Okay. <laughs> that was last year. Um, so you guys know, our listeners, you may not know, I have a delightful gift of going to movies for free. And um, I can take a person with me for free. So people that know me, like to use me to go to movies <laughs> and I'm a sucker. So I always say yes. <laughs> sure. So let's do a little, just a quick rundown of some movies that I saw this year. Um, the first movie I saw of the year was 50 shades freed. Ah, and after that, <laughs> um, and that would not even make the top five worse. I, wow. I, I would rather <laughs> so watch that. Merit, huh? I would rather watch that. Jeez, hand got to the third one. Oh yep. God. Oh, I don't think I saw yeah, the second now. one. I didn't see the second one either. Yeah. No. I yeah. did see the first one because it was a I cultural thing, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they're all a train wreck and yeah. delightfully yeah. And they're ridiculous. Like, the first I, one wasn't good. Oh, I like bad. listening to podcasts of people reviewing those movies. Oh. That's my favorite thing because, oh. like, low hanging fruit. Yeah, but, yeah. like, I, yeah, exactly. But satisfying. But still hilarious. I would love to do an in depth, just bash session of those movies that would be so much fun um so yeah that was the first movie i saw this year after that i saw several just shit shows we had a book club and no, no not good mama mia 2 oh. uh alpha ah. uh, yeah okay alpha which we have a story about alpha because you had you had been seeing commercials for it for like Nine months. I had been seeing commercials for it for like a fucking year. Yeah, and you and were telling it was, me about I was getting it. more angry the more I saw. And you were describing to me the movie, and I was like, I've I have no idea what movie you're talking about. Like, I've uh, never seen a Cody commercial. Smith McPhee, right? Yeah, the yeah, kid and yeah. He yeah. Meets the first dog, right? right. Okay, man, the dog yeah. So she's wolf. trying yeah. to describe to me this movie. And yeah. I'm like, I've legitimately never seen a commercial for that. I have no idea what she's yeah, talking I saw about. A and I, the night she goes to see it in theaters, guess what? I am constantly seeing fucking ads for on Facebook, on cable TV, everything. As soon as she goes to see it it's like the it follows monster she passed it to me yeah <laughs> she saw it now i had to see the advertisement oh yeah for it. it was oh god fuck that movie i would just oh i asked my dad i was like hey dad do you want to go to a movie and i knew i fucking knew it he's gonna say alpha and sure enough you want to see alpha <laughs> you, could, you couldn't be like no I, I don't. Well, we were gonna see Mission Impossible Fallout, but it had already left theaters. So. Oh. Yeah, so we had to we had to go see Alpha. Anyway, that's not my worst. My worst movie of the year. Three, two, one. 
No, I don't know. I was like, do you guys know? Is it Ken? No, nobody's no, fool. No, it's not Ken. It is nobody's fool. nobody's fool. Wait, yeah, what, what is this movie? Nobody's fool is. So this is where I'm lucky. Like I said at the top, I, I just fucking know avoided she's told me all this. Yeah, yeah. What is nobody's fool? <sighs> My friends made me go is this see a, it. Uh, Tiffany Haddish. Movie? This is a Tyler Perry movie starring <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. Oh, fucking hell! Is it a Tyler Shit. Tyler Perry movie? Right. And that son of a bitch does not know how to write a movie or direct a movie or produce a movie. Anything he does with movies is shit. I'm sorry if you like Tyler he's a, Perry. He's a better what actor. He's awful. The god genius that is Tyler Perry, a cottage industry who makes like 15 movies in a, in a year. I don't know how many movies he crank out. That doesn't, like mean, he, that doesn't, doesn't mean, mean he. That doesn't mean he knows how to make it. Good. Doesn't mean he knows how to make a movie. About even the. What are you saying even about the audience? The, with these the world. Are they dumb. Like at some point, the balance has oh, shifted on know. Iwi Bull. You remember, like Iwi Bull made yeah. how many fucking movies before eventually they figured out this oh, guy doesn't know yeah, shit doesn't about know movies. movies. And then that, like, the money dried up. Yep. But Tyler Perry yep. keeps yep. making movies. Does he keep making money? Well, he's I, all, yeah, he's also like I think independently wealthy of making movies, so I think that's a big part of it. Is that he does can he fund his own movies? Yeah. yeah, he also does like stage plays, and he has he has like a lot of different entrepreneurial things yeah. going on at I'm once. Not sa- so. I'm not saying that the guy isn't a great businessman. Uh, that he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. You're, you're saying like you're not going to slander his Shark Tank skills, huh? Yeah. No. I'm, <laughs> No, props to him. Make like, a deal. He's he's got his own fucking company. He's no, yeah, good for him. Good for him. He cannot write a fucking movie. <laughs> this movie was bullshit. It is it was insulting. I was so angry watching this movie. The other movies were shit. They were complete Mamma Mia 2 can go eat a bowl of dick. That movie sucked. <laughs> this movie a was whole insulting. Bowl of dick. It was absolutely Which insulting. One is, this? is this the one where her her she, her cousin The main character who I'm sorry, I can't remember the, right. who she's the actress's name. Right. I don't remember. She's a successful businesswoman. She, she's a, yeah, she's a successful <laughs> okay. businesswoman and she has a horrible haircut. Anyway, right. um her sister gets out of prison. And it like come Haddish, and yep. Tiffany Haddish and comes to stay with her, mm. and just you know turns her world upside down and kind she's of being thing. Catfish or something. Is it like an odd she's couple being situation? Because like uh, kind of she's from prison. Maybe she's, it she's from the wrong better. side she's, of the track. Yeah, she's very like she you know strong businesswoman, and Tiffany Haddish is very like rough around the edges. Basically, she's saying like her sister's pretending to be someone she's not because you know they're from the hood kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm I'm trying not to be like insulting right. because I. I yeah. I, whatever. It's trying fine. not to use the. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Uh, whatever. The the fact is, this movie, like the plot, is non-existent. It goes nowhere. This story goes absolutely nowhere. My friends that love these movies that went with me, even they were like, "What's ha- like? Where is this going?" I was Whoopi like, Goldberg "Exactly." Movie, where Whoopi Goldberg is the mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And she. It takes a lot of money to get her to come. Yeah. Be a part of something. Yeah. I like. I don't know where he thought the story was going, but Tyler Perry does not know how to write women at all. I'm pretty sure he hates women. It doesn't seem like a guy oh, who would. Based on the the like two movies I've seen, he definitely does. I'm I'm pretty sure he hates women, and I mean I know that the the large demographic for this movie is African American people, and I don't know if but he specifically lo- women. Yeah, yes, women specifically women. Like women. Yeah, go to I see don't. Tyler Perry. Movies. I don't That's think, true. and I don't think he likes either of them. Mm-hmm. But why? Well, maybe this is a deeper it's, psychological. It's like it why is. do That's you exactly respond to you know, as it, an audience yeah. to these movies? No, I was that's, seeing that's some, the problem. but you're that's seeing some problem. kind of truth or something that you're like, yes, this is how it is. No, or something, this right? Is, it was insulting. It's it's painting a picture that I would not want to identify. I mean, I'm not the dem- I'm not the ideal demographic for this movie. I will admit that, but I like on their behalf, I'm like, I I, I can't see how this would be promoting anyone very well at all. Like, it's just. It's absolutely ins- uh, it's insulting. I've, I've said that I, I can't even I can't even express it enough. I was like, the demographic for this movie deserves better. It they absolutely deserve better, and I was just completely appalled that this movie is being promoted and making money, and and the, and the people in my theater were laughing. I was like, this that is would make unbelievable. I was so mad. I was absolutely furious. So I'm I'm getting too worked up. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I f- fuck that movie. <laughs> fuck Tyler Perry. Michaela. Uh, so this year I kind of struggled with I struggled with filling my top five, and I also struggled with like I feel like I saw a lot of mediocre things. Mm. Nothing that was yeah. really offensive or horrible, but yeah, a lot of middle of the road. So like I really struggled with finding my worst because there was nothing that really stood out. Like last year, I really hated Alien Covenant. You didn't have a Tyler Perry. I, did, I didn't have <laughs> something like that. So I mean. Real. 
even though I feel like the Meg was my least enjoyable theater experience this year, uh, we did a whole episode on that. So I don't want to yeah. talk about that. Go go check out our episode. We, none of us liked it. None of yeah. us recommended it. Um, I feel like I'm coming around on the Meg. I think it's one of the great. No, it's oh, I was like, <laughs> I was just like who are you? <laughs> Colin's a pod person. All hell. Jesus, I'm coming is around drunk. on the Meg. Yeah. Oh my God, these movies. Honestly, like I'm like, should I go back and watch the Meg? Like no. I remember. No. I remember good things but like the yeah okay your memory is cloudy yeah. I know I just need <laughs> to go to back us, and Colin. listen yeah. to help our you. podcast C- Colin come towards will, the light yeah. the Meg is a no. bad movie Meg is a bad <laughs> movie are you confusing it with Jaws 2 this is yeah. not entertainment Jaws 2 is a great movie yeah yeah <laughs> Jaws 2 has Donna Wilkes in it so I mean yeah. it's angel. very true there you go. she's an there you angel go. <laughs> um, so I feel like the the techni- technically like worst uh, um, worst executed movie I saw this year yeah. like w- I mean, I, it's not, I didn't enjoy it the least, but is the worst executed movie that I could speak on to what I've seen was Gotti. I, I, it, it, like, it, I mean, we've like, it's become like an off mic conversation almost weekly at this point. Notice we, that that didn't, I, like, I didn't yeah. even list that among you guys my didn't bad even movies. Like, yeah. Like yeah. it's, it's, it it's almost well. become like a meme among us. I want to say yeah. because yeah. we talk but, about it so but much. But you're not angry at that. No, I'm not no. angry at it because like I knew going into it was going to be bad. Like yeah. I, my expectations I we were did. like the story behind Colin this is like, Gotti. Uh, Colin, you need I to watch to it. See it. So, yeah. I so recommend, uh, it's weird that it's, it's that it's you're so it's your funny. most disappointing, so, but it's I. Recommend but like, it, like yeah. I said, like I don't want to talk about the Meg anymore because no. I already talked about no. it, and like Ugh, no. I didn't really see anything else that was really offensive. Right. I guess or I think I avoided year. a lot of it. You yeah, know? we we are pretty much able to identify yeah. those movies this year. Right. Whereas, like, like if of what I've seen, the most technically poorly executed movie is Gotti. Like, because from it purely technical standpoint it is a fucking mess it is a disaster that but editor should never work again yeah no Kevin no Con- Kevin Connolly should never direct, should oh, never direct saying, again the actor should no. never work no, no, again yeah, John yeah. Travolta yeah uh, just, maybe not I don't know. <laughs> yeah. we got speed kills out right now wasn't I'm he down for that. nominated like last year for the people versus OJ Simpson the FX yeah, show the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. that was yeah. a great show I mean, yeah, that's what that's what I'm mean, seeing. Them TV is where it's at, yeah, but not e, movies. E from Entourage wasn't directing the episodes of fucking exactly. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. This movie was in production hell for a long time. It had 44 producers. Um, who knows how many so, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Its main it's, main it got plot sold was to just mo- like forget your family. You need to be a man and go to jail. Yeah, that it, was the main. It was purchased idea. by MoviePass for distribution. Yeah. That's where we're at with this, you know. MoviePass so, was yeah. right behind uh, this movie. Just the backstory behind going to... Because Holly and I actually went and saw this in theaters. Yes, we did. Uh, As did I. <laughs> we saw it opening weekend. And yes, we, we were, did. Okay, so <laughs> it came out on my birthday, first of all. It came out on my birthday, and I love John Travolta. Like, so a gift? Travolta movie coming out on my birthday, I kind of have to see it. So we went and saw it, and... Uh, we were hoping for empty theater so that we could kind of just like mystery science theater mm-hmm. it up. There were some people definitely in there taking it seriously, yeah. <laughs> which kind of sucked, but yeah. it wasn't that many. But I mean, he looks straight in the camera in the first scene of this movie. How can you like take a movie seriously when like John Travolta and his like the makeup is fine. The makeup looks yeah, I was decent. Actually, I was actually kind of impressed with the makeup. Yeah. The makeup and his performance are like the best things about this movie. Kelly Preston's really bad. Everyone else Horrible. is really She's bad. bad, yeah, bad um, bad hair. Travolta's doing the best he can with this shitty, shitty script. Yeah. Um, there's like 12 time jumps in the first like 30 to 40 minutes. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> no, like you're literally not. every scene that changes is a time jump yeah. by like 10 to 30 years, depending on the scene. Yeah. It might be a matter of like two years. It might be 30 years. Cause like it goes to old man Gotti and it goes back to, to young Gotti. They, they intercut real life footage. It is a technical disaster of a movie. Yeah. Um, I think you should try and watch the first 40 minutes just for the LOLs because he's talking straight into camera. The time jumps make no sense. There's that part where he talks about how he has throat cancer and they took his tit off and put it on his face, yeah. as he says. That's hilarious. That's his, uh, that's his tit jowl. He's like, they put my tit on my talk. face. Yeah. It's, it's all like, you have no idea. Yeah. I don't, well, let you me no ask idea. you this. Yeah. Okay, so... You guys saw this in a theatrical setting. Yeah, and I'm we're saying, giggling the whole time. Right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, going, Sean yeah. also went to the theater. Oh, yeah, just being like, wow. But if I'm by myself watching this, I, I think I was don't by, watch it by yourself. I was by myself. 
In a theater. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, and you theater. still like had a, had a okay. somewhat but decent time. That's what I just wonder if I'm going to have fun watching it on Amazon Prime. Or How do you feel about Stacey Keach naming the boroughs? Oh, know? yeah. There's there's like, we, yeah. we this is like the meme of our group, right? We talk about this all the time. Yeah. How they're like, Stacey Keach names off all five boroughs in New York Their straight, fist. Yeah. straight yeah. to John to, Gotti. Straight yeah. to John Gotti's yeah. face. It's very dramatic scene. It's a super dramatic very scene. Very dramatic. He calls them all off. He raises a finger for each one. And we're like, well, yeah, he knows he lives here. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he gets this it. has not has this made it to YouTube like uh, the Nick it was Cage in the trailer stuff from oh okay. it was but in I mean, the trailer like the Wicker Man no. has there not, been like the no. greatest has, moments no. from Gotti the people not, who, the people who should know no not enough people have have not the right people have not seen it to meme it. I should say, like it. it this so movie this could is be a freak memed. show movie, is what you're saying. Oh, probably. That's what, yeah. right after. Right after we saw it, I was like, I think this is a freak <laughs> yeah. show movie. It's, yeah. it's at the top of a list of what is now being called ill-advised cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I <laughs> totally agree with that name. Yeah. And it's it's. And do, do you guys remember that scene where like they're introducing you to the rival mobsters and they literally do like a slow motion turnaround and their name pops up on the screen yeah. next to them yeah. like it's a video game and then you never see those people again yeah, yeah. like just, it is a technical disaster they introduce characters movie. for no reason yeah mm. and none they, and they keep there's this one guy they keep introducing and they keep the going back the bathrobe guy the bathrobe guy yeah. and they keep going back to the same I'm hoping I'm scene. seeing that it's his name that pops up uh, it he just be. shuffles down the bathrobe. street he goes past the street in he's, slow motion and they use the same shot and like he's not. Times. He's not an old, decrepit man. He's no. a younger guy. He's like in his what thirties? And I maybe. don't yeah. know why he is this way. Yeah. And they don't explain it. No, they do. They do later on. They do. Maybe they do. They do. But yeah. they keep coming back to him in this condition. Yeah. And it's just like, what? Is but the thing is, they're they're explaining different aspects of the mob to the audience, but it's not to the audience. It's to the other characters who are in the mob. Uh, yeah, exactly. And it doesn't <laughs> work. It's a it's a mob, it's yeah. Movie where the mob explains the mob. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. I, you know what? I was thinking about it today on my way over here when I was thinking about like, is this my worst? I don't. I I I don't know what he did to make money. I don't, the more I think about it, I don't know what John Gotti did to make money for like the family. You know what I'm saying? Like they talk about like the hierarchy of the family right. a bunch. It all it's yeah, it's all I, talk about who's gonna it's, run the it family. It's about like who's gonna do, run what they do. And they talk about like how he cleaned up the streets. He cleaned yes, up the streets. He made because, the neighborhood. Because, because they talk about this, that all yeah, the time. People love John Gotti. Because yeah. this movie is a propaganda, propaganda movie, propaganda. so they leave out all the crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why oh, yeah, they do. The, yeah. When he dies, they cut to so many. Join the mob and go to jail. Yes, they make him sound like a hero and a god. When like he dies, they cut to all these people in the street being like, he did so much good for this neighborhood. He's going to yeah. be missed so much. He was a good man. Like, there's so many yeah. people. Like, no one has a bad thing to say about this man in this entire movie, is it? I've never seen a propaganda movie in theaters before, so yeah. that's a first. Yep. But it, it, like I said, it is a technical disaster. You can tell it was in development hell. The, the fact that John Travolta went through with even making this movie is a fucking miracle in, its, in and of itself because this could have, mm-hmm. like, there are Lifetime movies and, like, like, Lifetime does true crime movies better than this movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, I know this wasn't a huge budget movie, but it it it's a fucking mess. I mean, you know, Scientology put a pretty penny in there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And they still couldn't make sense of the plot, you know? Yeah. Like it's the plot is a fucking disaster. So it it technically is the worst movie I've seen this I year. I get it now. This is why you wanted to have the chair tonight. <laughs> and on Gotti. And on Gotti. Yeah. It's also great. It's also great that his son is goes from young John Gotti Jr. and then they're flash forward to him being like what is this supposed to be? Twenty years later, and he just looks. He's like, like three hundred pounds heavier, and they no, just no, no, all gray. They just, paint, they son, just painted his they, hair. They, they gave his, his his very young looking son like a couple of gray tips. Yep. Yeah, they yeah. It, they painted it's his the hair. It is the worst. Kid. But but it's when the they cut in color. the real life yeah. footage and yes. compare it to the actors, then you see how much the actors look nothing like the real nothing. life. Yeah, they nothing should like, like the the real footage. Like the actual Gotti Junior is like a it's like it's like a, like a bloated fifty year old yeah. man, and they have this like twenty two year old buff, buff. guy yeah. playing him. Playing this I guy. do want to he see this movie, but like you've scared me off of it. I'm kind of like yeah, but I'm gonna watch it by myself and go like. You should. This I is did. just a You'll fucking horrible, shitty movie. <laughs> yeah. Like Sleepwalkers. I watched that by myself. Awful. I watched it with you guys. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we that's need to bring Gotti to the freak show. Yeah, so that's, that's what it. I'm afraid yeah. of. Gotti's coming to the show. That's yeah. it. God. All right. Well, uh, I guess thank you for hanging with us for this long, this long. listener. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, for our epic uh, roundup of the best and you're of welcome the that year. We ended yeah. with Gotti. 2018. Um, so our best and worst, sorry. Uh, so next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by you. 
We don't know what that is right now, but we will. And I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Thank you for not punishing us too hard. Uh, <laughs> and so until then, um, happy, thank you for happy, uh, thank you for a great year, and we look Merry forward to New another year. one. All right. We, we did good this year. Well, yeah, go. it's a good year. On, on to next year. On to next on year. And to new adventures. 2019. And new movies. And bad movies and good movies. and good There you go. All right. <laughs> so until then, listener, the basement is going dark.